Jacob, give me the thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. What? We're going to call our meeting back to order at 1.30. Going to ask in just a second when the board gets seated, seated up here. <laughs> board, what's your pleasure on going through um, development services financials? I think we got all the information we got on the cover sheet, but is there any other questions on that? All right, let's move on to the executive director, public safety, um, general fund departments. Mr. J.R. Grimes. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Good Lord. We can hear you. Yeah, <laughs> slightly. Um, our two general fund departments would be EMS and our emergency management. Uh, we're going to start in EMS uh, in fiscal year 2021. Um, some accomplishments that we, that we did <clears throat> was we fully staffed our EMS department, which is 63 EMS employees. That's only the EMS side. That's not, does not include fire. Um, our call volume has remained the same without non-emergency transfers. Um, we were doing about 1,200 of those plus a year. Um, so we're running the same amount of calls locally than we would if we were still going out of county. So the, the number of calls is up, but we're just not sending our units out. Um, <clears throat> we added central supply to our fire and EMS, and that saved a lot of trips and a lot of money uh, of redundant ordering of supplies. <clears throat> we um, purchased purchases that we've completed. Um, is we purchased two new ambulances, eight life pack cardiac monitors, eight auto pulses, which is your mechanical CPR devices, two stretchers. Um, we purchased the vehicle for our uh, health and safety officer. Um, and also we're working on, still not complete, but will be by the end of the year, is replacing the generator at our main EMS station. Um, ambulance billing is current and up to date. And uh, one other thing we brought in was a dedicated fleet mechanic assigned to us through a partnership with the fleet division that's going around to the stations and actually doing preventative maintenance at the stations. Um, it has saved us a tremendous amount of breakdown time um, over the last few months, um, and it's worked really well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, staff changes in 2022. Um, it does not take long with our call volume throughout the day's time that our resources get outran by the amount of stress that's put on the system. Um, we are probably one of the only counties that has one single hospital for our, our size county. Um, and the amount of time it takes to transport with traffic and the time we're sitting there at the hospital waiting to unload patients, sometimes um, resources become thin. <clears throat> so what we did is we added one ambulance and there will be the staffing changes for 2022 in the, in the EMS budget um, was to be able to put an additional ambulance on to answer 911 calls. Um, the other one was a logistics specialist and this is a person who could help us run our logistics warehouse. Um, what we're doing now is Every shift officer on shift has an AOR area of assignment other than doing calls and answering calls. But what happens is, is you've got a person there that's trying to run a shift and also trying to get supplies out. And I mean, they can't supervise in their zone by going to pulling central supply stuff and, and getting the supplies out to the units. We did put a, a logistics specialist in there to try to handle our central supply for both fire and EFS. <clears throat> and this would be split. 50% from the general fund and 50% out of the fire because we're brought <coughs> both segments into um, one, one location. So it's kind of helped us get our materials and stuff out. We've got the location, the old East Black at FHP station. So they're um, able to get things in and out fairly quickly. Um, capital changes. Um, oh, that other one was the fire rescue division chief. Uh, from that fire services report that was done at y'all's request, that was one of the positions that was put in there. There's a lot that position can do. It can help us stay up to date and super, um, oversight on our uh, rescue billing division. It also gives us the ability to get to find other areas where we're lacking or uh, need help. But it also takes some of the AORs off of the folks that are on the street trying to do a paramedic or EMT or firefighter job. They're also trying to figure out how to work on a stretcher on a day's time, how to um, work on an auto pulse, work on a life pack, run the computer programs. There's an awful lot that could potentially come off of the folks that are trying to answer 911 calls and adding this position in. Um, capital changes in emergency management, we included in there to replace a sign that we talked about a few weeks ago at a uh, workshop. Uh, we didn't make it far with that, so 
that is what it is there. Um, the gate outside of the EOC, the automatic opening gate, um, is starting to crack and fall apart, um, so it needs to be replaced. Um, we're going to try to get, that was an old number that was put in last year's capital replacement, but it didn't get done. Um, it didn't get approved, so we're going to relook at it. I'm going to actually have some <coughs> fresh estimates put in to see if we can get it done any cheaper than that. Our forklift in the EOC warehouse has gone out. Uh, we do not have one except for a small battery-powered one to pick out of the out of the actual shelving unit. We don't have one to maneuver in and get in out of a, out of a um, semi. So we've included that in this year's uh, capital change replacement. Emergency medical services. Um, we're trying to refurbish the station um, out in Interlochen at Mary Wisham Park. Um, we actually, that was a station for, for three people. We're now currently housing six out there. So the, the conditions, you know, they've taken a lot of their living area and put it into bunk rooms. Uh, just to be able to house the people that actually work in that station. So that was one of the things we really wanted to try to push forward. Um, that was something that was not funded in last year's budget, but we think it is important. Um, also, uh, Pomona Park, similar to the same. That's a station that probably one day is going to have to have some career personnel put in it. Um, but it is not set up. A lot of our stations across the county are not set up for career personnel. Um, because of, you know it was just built as a fire station, doesn't have living facilities, and in order to have people living there, they got to be sprinkled and they got to be alarmed and all that kind of stuff. But that, none of our facilities are currently like that, and we were just trying to look for our future um, to try to start getting some of our facilities up to the uh, where they needed to be. We put uh, the replacement of two ambulances. I think we have to do this fairly regular. I hate to say we have to buy two, but if we don't. Our ambulances average about 100,000 miles a piece a year, transporting back and forth to the hospital. So at the end of the life cycle, they're at a half a million miles. So even replacing two a year, we get you know four or five years out of them. They're completely wore slap out. So in order to stay with that, I mean you got to replace two a year. Um, operational changes, uh, medical supplies have increased in cost. A box of uh, medical gloves prior to COVID was three dollars and some change. Right now we're paying close to 19. Um, so all of the medical supply stuff is up, you know, tremendously. I mean, we God, don't know you don't use lumber to help people, sir. Thank God you don't use lumber to help people. Right. Uh, uh, fuel costs are going up. I mean, that's no surprise. Um, and then the replacement of our computers, everything that we do uh, from EMS billing to patient care reports is done on a computer. So. Um, with them running the amount of calls they do and getting beat up. And go, I mean, not necessarily, I guess beat up is probably a bad term, but going up and down our roads and stuff, uh, a computer's not meant to do that. So we have to keep replacing computers. Uh, we're getting about four years out of them, so this is just a replacement of the computers that we have. Okay. Not adding any additional, just we'll replacement. That's what I was going to ask you. I'm going to ask you a question before I turn it. Yes, one of them, we just replaced a lot of those computers last year. <laughs> We bought new ones. We bought new ones, so I think they're up, they're up three years old. Mm, we just bought some last year. We year, bought year, quite year, a year one last year because I, I was here last year. I year started before. October one. We have not bought any computers. Yeah. Like so in 2020, we bought we bought like 15 of them, if not mistaken. There was quite a few. The, the Panasonic Tough Books, yeah, yes, 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 you did. But some of them are already breaking. So I, I know, uh, but, but we're. we're We've paid an awful lot of money for those. We're going back down to the, the Dell Ruggins, which are significantly cheaper. I think those were upwards of $6,000 a piece for those Panasonics. The ones that we just looked at are 1800 bucks a piece. So we're actually scaling way back on the amount we're gonna pay for the next round of computers. All right, uh, Mr. Rawls, you have questions, sir? So what is the average right now? What is your collection ratio on EM, for just EMS? You talking about what we're actually receiving back? No, you're, you're just, do you have a, are you at 70, 80, 90% collection or? It's 63 to 65 percent. Dang. That's, that's also higher than the national average. Yeah. We're actually, we're actually a little bit higher than the national average. And, and when you take a look at our, at our, at our buildings then, and, and what we're charging for the services, how are we compared to the national average? Well, a lot of stuff we can bill is based upon what insurance companies will allow us to bill for. I mean, we can bill them for whatever we want, but the insurance companies aren't going to pay so much. The insurance companies aren't going to pay so much. Um, Medicaid, Medicaid will only pay so much for a hospital transfer, so it doesn't really matter what we bill unless we just give the, you know, end up passing it on to unpaid debt to the to the um, patient. You know, what, uh, insurance companies are setting our rates. When, so you, when you, you mentioned hospital transfers, we're out of that business, correct? 
We, that's correct. We're not doing non-emergency transfers of uh, inner facilities. Well, we're doing inner facilities in the county. So if one of the nursing home facilities was to call, needed to transfer to the hospital, we would do an in, in-county transfer. But we're not sending our units out of the county. Non-emergency? Yeah, the non-emergencies from potentially a, a, a one of the nursing facilities, they could call us if, 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 the not, if their normal trucks are not available. So they don't have the private contractor, we will okay. still go by and pick so one. So their first it. option is yes, sir. private transport, then Correct. they call us. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, the ambulances, you're looking at, the, you said 615000 for two ambulances plus uh, required equipment. Yes, what sir. is the required equipment? We're putting a new stretcher in, a, a, a new cardiac monitor, and um, the, the radios, like the, the VHF radios and stuff that are inside them, those are not included in the stock ambulance price. So the ambulance that we're taking in a service do not have a cardiac monitor that can be that can recycle because that's what we used to do. Yeah, and what we, they we, do, we but then, then then we you know we, we keep going down the road, and then we're going to have them again where we come to the board and ask for two hundred fifty thousand dollars for cardiac monitors. So that's why we thought it would decide so to come with one big ticket item, bring them a small amount at a time, so we don't ever have to get to that point again. But what do you do with the old one? The old cardiac monitor. So have, like, let's just have, have a conversation right now just about cardiac monitors. Okay. Um, what is the average age of your monitors? Uh, up until this year, eight and nine years old each. And this year, what happened? We, they, we, we purchased new ones. All new? Uh, all but two. All but two ambulances got brand new cardiac monitors this year. So the two ambulances you're replacing? You in this, in this budget, monitors? we'll have two new cardiac monitors. Okay. Um, are, you, are we using those big nav units, um, the, the commercial freight liner chassis, or what are we using for tra chassis? Well, th th this go around, we decided to go with the F554 wheel drive, drive chassis because we spend an awful lot of time stuck in some of our sand roads. Mm -hmm. So the, the newer ones we just purchased, which were significantly cheaper, are a four wheel drive F550 model or and 5500. $280,000 a piece or so? I think that's what they were roughly. I, uh, I can't remember the exact number. Two forty-five. I'd had to. I had to go pull the number on them. That's without any equipment. Times have changed. <laughs> um, all right. Um, you've already. You've already talked about the the EOC sign. The, the automatic gate. Twenty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. I. I just did an automatic gate for somebody, and um, he. He bought a nice gate. Powder coated <laughs> aluminum. No, I, I agree, um, and I said, I said in there, that was, a, that was a budget number last year. It just still hasn't got fixed. I honestly have not went out and got prices on a gate. I just transferred a number from last year. It's probably not going to take that I don't, much I don't think fix. he's 5000 I really don't. And there's a guy right up the street on Highway 17 that does um, is Gainesville powder coating, but they're actually in Putnam County. Um, they build those for a living. Um, I guarantee you'd see a price. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go get prices. This was just a carry forward of something that we just a project that we still need to do that we didn't get, didn't get approved last year. Okay. Um, and then the forklift at EOC. Um, that's that's a big number as well. How how heavy a forklift are you getting? We just honestly we just went straight to the state contract price and just pulled a, pulled a, a forklift off of the state EOC or the state you, sheriff's average, office contract. What are you lifting? Sir, on average, what are you lifting? <laughs> pallets of water, pallets of food. Six thousand pound forklift, right? I, I I would assume, yeah. I mean, brand new all day long, less than fifteen grand. Fifty thousand dollars is is a, I mean that that's a big forklift if you're okay. I mean we just put a number in there because I mean we went to the to the website and looked up a Yale forklift. I don't even really know which one it really was. I okay. really hadn't dug that deep down into yeah. detail. Um, so if we can buy one for fifteen grand, we can buy one for fifteen grand. I just don't you, know. I've never seen one for fifteen thousand. So are you getting a diesel or um, propane? The one we currently have is diesel. I mean I'm up on any of the options. Diesel would be easier for us because we have diesel there. I agree. Okay. Versus trying to have to yeah. go out and try to fill up a propane facility. Um, and then if you get these two new ambulances this year, is, is there another two next year? Is that, is that well, we're, year we're, we're, we're currently running eight ambulances. So if, if, if you cycled them out every four years, I mean, you would end up with a half a million miles on an ambulance in four years. So that's why I said if we don't continue with a pace of two, then, we, then we're just going to have right, right now, if we, if, if we fund these two right now, are we looking at having to fund two next year? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, our, we have units on the road right now that are 2019s that are pushing 250 to 300,000 miles. Is that good, Mr. Rawl? Yeah, for it, no. Okay. Um, anybody else? Because I have a question, Mr. Uh, Grimes. Yes, sir. The fire station, the station refurbishment out at Mary Wisham Park is a mobile home out there, isn't that? No, sir. That's not a mobile home. Pit? Mm -mm, that's a that's a uh, concrete block building. Where the where the EMS sleep at? Yes, sir. Okay. So what what is the plan then? Three hundred fifty thousand, because I thought the eventual goal was to put 
these fire stations in every community. Is we gonna look, are we going to look at? Well, I was hoping we could do a retrofit or remodel one of these besides having to, to, to buy a whole other fire station. You know, right. I thought if we could make one of these work into the no, future would be fine. I mean, I it's, it's not in a bad location. No, it's really a very good location. Yeah, I mean, you're going to spend, I don't know what it would cost today to build a fire station, but I don't think you could build one for what you could potentially do a remodel no. on this one and make it work for the staffing okay. needs. But the history that I have is when I got here, the design was going to be the cookie cutter design, taking from community to community, placing it down. And I appreciate this because that, that does save us costs. We already own the land and it's already being operational for that purpose anyway. So, yeah, but that's what I'm hearing is then we probably wouldn't be building another station out there in the West End. Would you use that property? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't think it's in a bad location. If I mean, I could flip it to the north the same amount of mileage from the intersection there, it'd probably be a little bit better, but I, I can't see where it's worth that much money to move it. Um, up to the north side of 350 or to the north side of 20 versus the south um, I, I think it's in a pretty good location um, okay. I, we want to look at what it would take to, to, to make it where it could actually house six people we've got a conceptual design um, it's supposed to go out to um, I guess estimate estimation next week to even tell us what it's going to cost we may not be able to do it I mean that's we just put a number in there to try to to, get, to complete it if it does it does I mean I may come back and go you know what it just isn't worth it you know, well, we don't know do we, do we at least look my point was I don't want to spend 350,000 if our goal is to put that station out there and build it for another 700,000 two three years from now no so I, I appreciate no this I, I'm right just here. trying to make it the, the current ones we have work for you know the need for today and Good. into the future so Good. Mr. Turner you have the floor I believe Mr. Pickett was next. I saw his light on whenever I, but I'll, I'll go, no well, problem. Well, I had you as number one and Mr. Pickett's number I'll two. I'll go, sir, no problem. Okay. A couple of things. Number yes, one, on the fire stations, mm -hmm. we're trying to get them ready for future full-time use on some of them. Yes, sir, the one at Pomona Park well, currently does have somebody in there that's around well, the clock. We just put a trailer in there, a modular like we did out at Floor Home. It's like 60 grand instead of 400 grand. I mean, if, I mean, if we want to build a county of fire stations with mobile homes, I'm fine with it. I mean, I just didn't know what the direction you guys want to travel. But I mean, it's the, the, the one that's, that's at floor home probably isn't up to the code it's supposed to be either. Um, I mean, the, the, that place was supposed to be sprinkler, it's not. Um, so it's, you know, I, I, like I said, we can look at it. I mean, we can see what a modular building would cost. It's sprinkler ready to go. I mean, it's absolutely an option. Are you sure that it has to be sprinkler if it's a standalone on the side facility and not part of the fire station itself? Yes, sir, it absolutely does. Anytime somebody sleeps inside that facility, it's got to be sprinkler. Okay. Well, I bet you could get one of those modulars with a sprinkler designed in it a whole lot cheaper than 400 and something thousand dollars. That's what I'm saying. If you can operate out of your current facility, but it's for updated for people to move in it might be the modular thing is the way we need to oh absolutely at. we can absolutely look at that i mean i'd be happy to go back and look at modular buildings i just didn't think it was a i don't know how long they last longevity i mean will they last 20 years i mean okay one quick comment if i may you leave, the floor, leave this subject for half a second go back one okay uh, jim it was brought to my attention at uh, lunch that the um that for these periods of time when we have a lot of plans that need reviewing, there's an outsource surface, a service that you can outsource your, your uh, plan review to. And uh, it may be that that's something that they need to start looking into instead of as it expands, hiring more and more people to look for an outsource. Uh, Mr. Chair, to respond to that, we have looked at that. Mr. Siafi is not fond with that. He says that there's flaws with that. It's really, they're not under our control and the quality is not as we would want it to be. Well, and it's hit and miss. Set it up correctly to where they actually did the plan review, but then the, the basic plan review and then sent it back to Leo or Mr. Peckham, either one, Mr. Watson or Mr. Peckham. Then they could, they could do the final plan review, but it takes a lot less time if somebody else is doing the complete plan review and then they can just look for the notes or whatever. So. That was just a suggestion or whatever. Uh, sorry for No, you're fine. you're fine. Thank you. Uh, but that's all I had at this time, okay. sir. Mr. Pickens, you have the floor? Yeah, JR, with the um, refurbishment of the, say, the Pomona Park, there is somebody there. What what time, what, what type of hours are they there? They're there 24 hours a day around the clock. Okay, so they're staying there now. Yes, sir, but there's only room for one person there, um, and there's not room for two. 
Okay, in the refurbishment, you're talking about having a sprinkler. I guess if somebody's going to stay, yep. does that That's include correct. sprinkling the whole building so it would protect the equipment that's in there that is correct i mean there is no option just to sprinkle a portion of the building without you either got to separate it by a firewall or through fire sprinklers um, and a lot of times you'll find that the sprinklers are cheaper than what it is to construct a firewall in the building okay with the town of Bavona being in there do they participate in this do they participate in the in an in a extra millage rate to support that station or yes sir that facility actually belongs to putnam county um, but yes, they, they do participate. Okay, um, that's all I have. Mr. Adams, that? I just want to, West Putnam, I, I don't want that Mary wishing to be the end all for West Putnam. Um, from station 20, so if you take from 20 out to 315 to the southwest, that corner, even if we bounce up to 21, it's inaccessible from that station in an effective matter because Lake Susan's not paved all the way through. Old Hawthorne Road doesn't go all the way through as paved. Um, there's no way to get to that community. And that corridor, which is District 20 from an election standpoint, houses 5% of our population. People don't understand that. It's very, we're very spread out, but 5% of the population of Putnam County is down in that, that corner of the county. And to end all with Mary Wisham, cuts off, there's no way to get there from there. No, I mean, I, that's, that's the, solve today's needs i'm not saying there's never be a need for a fire station in down in that particular area or retrofit the one that's currently already there or or some other kind of thing but it's not today uh today you know we have staff already in this station that are in there it's a they've taken up part of their living quarters as, as, a, as a barracks area now so this was and then like i said we're just trying to get a design done and it's in the process now to, to have the design done but i mean there's absolutely one day i mean there's a fire station there now um, I would never say that was the end all at Mary Wisham Park by any means. I just wanted to make sure we're keeping that in our sights. Because absolutely, absolutely. I think that's one of our highest risk areas from coverage standpoint. Mr. Rawls? Um, just want to put this out. I just had a conversation with somebody that um, we're doing some work for, and she works for a property management company, said they applied for a roofing permit in South Florida. It's taken over nine weeks. So <laughs> I told her, I said, maybe I don't feel so bad. <clears throat> um, uh, are we including room for volunteer firefighters in these these build outs because that was one of the things that uh, we'd said that we would work towards having an integrated service to the volunteers if they did want to um, spend the night and work with the, the career folks that that, that possibly be there is that consideration being taken well there there is room at the, the current ones we have yes I mean the, if you went to East Palak or to um, Satsuma yeah, there's, there, there's room there uh, this one particular one at Mary Wisham Park um, I would say no because it's just already we're tying up every square footage of place we can because the place really was not designed for six people. Well, but I, I mean, it already fire, currently has six people. Talk fire the next. Right now we're doing. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, like I said before, if you guys would like, bring me what you've got drawn up. I can sit down with you and scale out and move stuff around so you can take a look at what you can possibly build in square footage. Okay. Um, cost will be up to y'all. We'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adams, that? And I, I just want to agree with Mr. Turner. I, I think the modular idea or some more cost effective idea from a living quarter standpoint is something we definitely should ex explore as an option. Um, Do, just, I mean, yeah. at some point, can somebody share with me where they may be able to purchase? Or I, I've never seen modular buildings? come in less than site built. Um, it's normally more than site yeah. built. To be honest. It's, it's faster if you're in a hurry. It goes up quick, but if, if you're actually, okay. because they, when they build modular construction, it's the same, they build the same way they would um, <coughs> a regular, but they sit on a stem wall. So you're building a stem wall, you're, you're putting up a building. Um, whether or not it's sprinkler, sprinkler's cheap, cheap and easy. Two, <coughs> well, we can look at different. Yes, sir, Mr. Turner. Two years ago, they furnished one for floor home, maybe three outside, but I think it was like two years ago. It was 60000 ish yeah. That's a mobile home. Yeah, it's whatever. I'm just telling you that it was they furnished it for floor home, and it was a huge savings over what it would have cost to go in there and okay. stick build a building for the for the uh, firefighters to live in at that location. So, and I'll edit that if it has to be a mobile home with sprinkler systems. I I don't care. I mean, as long as it houses the number of people we need and it's comfortable, I actually. 
to me, then maybe we could use some of that space in the fire station for fundraising, holding equipment, whatever else you could use it for that frees up from that. Just so. something else to look at. It yes, sir. Sure. I mean, I'll absolutely. I mean, we can reach out to the same vendors we got those from and see if it's potential to get a sprinkler model in it very well, maybe. Absolutely. Leon County did the exact same thing. They, they went around putting a bunch of mobile homes out in the county when they started their fire service. And now they've, they've built stations out. So it may, it may be a baby step for us just to put mobile homes out there and have them specially designed to meet the needs of the, because they don't need big bedrooms, obviously. No, absolutely not. We just got, I mean, the, the, the ones that we did, that's in the conceptual drawing of this one, Mary Wisham are not big by any means, you know, time, but, time, but I mean, I mean I, it should be at a point where you guys can look at it in the next couple of weeks. All right. Do we have any questions on the next page on the financials? All right. Seeing none, we're going to go to the next <coughs> fire fund. Okay. And this is this is where we talk about the firefighters, not the EMS and volunteers and things. Okay. Like that. So, um, moving on to the fire fund, uh, fiscal year 2021, uh, we, we were able to we got the safer grant. So that's in. It's fully implemented. Uh, we added the eight additional firefighters per shift. Um, they are on the road as of today. Um, the union contract was negotiated as it came through in the um, administrative, administrative, administrative report. Um, the volunteer fire departments have decided that when they we're working very, very well with them. Um, the first time we've ever had a working standard op operating procedures from, the, from everybody. We're doing the same thing on the career side as we are the volunteer side. So everybody's now on the same sheet of music, which was a was a great accomplishment because now we're all working together. We have at least one meeting a month with them guys. Uh, so everybody knows everything. It's transparent. It's honest. So everybody knows what's happening across our service. And that was one of the first time that's ever been done. Um, we started 24 hour fire coverage in East Palaka, um, as well as that we put two firefighters dedicated to fire um, at the EMS main station because it was ready for folks that could move in there. Um, so they're covering you know, the enclaves of, 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 that are inside the um, placa that's not excluded in the municipal limits. They're also able to get into Francis. They're able to go to Barden. Um, they're able to move up into Bostwick. So at least we got some kind of fire coverage started um, around the clock right here in Palaka. Uh, we started the 24-hour fire coverage in West Putnam at the interlocking uh, Mary Wish and Parks uh, place out there. We got an engine crew of two, um, which stays very, very, very busy. Um, that, I don't know if that truck ever shuts off. Uh, we started, we put one person in to team up with the folks in Alachua County. Alachua County is supplying two folks at Melrose. So we put one person in there to operate a tanker out of that station so it can maneuver to any fires that happen in the west end of the county. Um, so that was just kind of a far out area that really needed some help. So we got one person in that station. Um, we do have a person that is on a squad truck and floor home. So at least we got some fire apparatus moving. They've we've negotiated a deal with the uh, volunteer fire department there that if it is a fire, he can go across the street. He leaves the mobile home, goes across the street, gets in a fire truck, and is able to at least start and get the fire operation started. Um, two of the folks from the, the, the station in Satsuma uh, travel every day down to Georgetown because they were spending a lot of time of their day because when the call would go off in Georgetown, they would drive down there and then had to drive back to Satsuma. So they're spending the first 12 hours of their day down there. The station's just not at the ability where it can house them. Um, it's not sprinklered. Uh, the volunteer fire department down there is like, listen, we want them. <laughs> How can we get there? They've offered up some money. They just don't have enough money to quite get over to hump to be able to bring that fire coverage in there. So, I mean, they're, they're willing to, you know, do what they can do to help us get along. Um, and that's one of the things that's in this uh, capital improvement budget was see if we could actually help put them put a sprinkler system in that place. And then the, those folks could go down there around the clock. Um, we purchased two new fire engines in this current year we're in. Uh, four quick response vehicles. We got some of our supervisors and stuff out of the F-550s that are eating us up in parts and wear and tear to go supervise. They can do that now out of a half-ton pickup truck. This should be a lot less money to, to buy, maintain, and operate. Uh, one of the things you guys approved last year was a breathing air compressor that has been bought and it's over in East Palaka. We're waiting on to get it installed and hooked up. That's the only one we have in the central part of the county. There is one in the south end and one in the west end, but it was not one centralized. Um, we're doing some fire station generator repair um, uh, that was included in last year's budget as well. It's just not completed yet. We got one that we got to do at the Melrose um, Communications <coughs> Tower and the uh, generator that runs the building itself at Satsuma. We're still working on trying to get those uh, two generators replaced this year um, and replaced 50 sets of our 400 uh, sets of PPE. And a lot of that was to new folks that just started. Um, 
The bad part about PPE is it has no, we don't have any control over it. Every one of them sets has to be replaced every 10 years. Yeah. Uh, that's the standard. We have to live by it. So we have to get on some kind of replacement plan. The pants and the jacket itself is over about, right at $2,500 a piece. So we have to stay on a replacement. That's no, that's no gloves. That's no boots. That's no helmet. That's just the jacket and the pants. Um, we have no control over that. So we have to do that. So that's one of the increases in this year's budget. We, and the price on it is just going up. I mean, it's just material. It's just like everything else. Um, staffing changes in the fire fund. Uh, the thing I want to point out is, is when we ask for one person, it really ends up being three. I mean, because so, they come to work every third day. Um, they work a 24-hour shift. So it's not like we're adding 15 firefighters a day. We're adding five a day. Um, and or in this particular case, I wanted to put a full-time engine in that floor home area because that's one area that, to me, still is as an area of concern because they are just so far from everything. They're so far from Interlock and they're so far from Palaka. It's, that's one little small place if I could fix today, that'd be the one last area that I'd have to fix in today. Um, so that was adding two people into that area. And the other one's for, for a reduction of unbudgeted overtime um, because we work at what I want to consider minimum staffing. Uh, so every time somebody takes off on vacation, sick leave, bereavement leave, we're paying unbudgeted overtime. We don't have a budgeted overtime line. So that was a way to put people on there to where we could step back three or four positions a day and not pay overtime um, above this budgeted amount. Um, so at any given day, we could have five people off. So every time when somebody takes with five people are off, it means we're paying five people overtime that day. So what I was asking for there was for three people a day on one per shift as a reduction of unbudgeted overtime. I mean, you could take the average amount of people we have off every day and it lands anywhere between three and five people a day we pay overtime on the shift so that was the thought process behind it it wasn't to add a whole lot of additional staffing it was to start covering positions when somebody was on sick leave or on vacation or comp time or bereavement leave or, or whatever they were on that was the thought process behind that because then you could start replacing the first couple people off every day with the additional staffing you have on a shift um, the other things was just the other half of the, the logistics and the fire rescue division chief that came out of the um, um, fire service committee report. Uh, capital changes. Uh, this is where I asked for the be able to put the sprinkler systems in those two places, the area of concern. Um, the, the well locations across countywide, that was for when we do our countywide ISO rating, we have to maintain a minimum fire flow across the county. And if you have to travel from Sun Garden Road to Barden Road, just using that for example, the amount of road miles it is, you can't maintain that with the amount of trucks that we can send to one fire. So we have to start putting refill points to fill our fire trucks somewhere around this county because we all don't have the fire hydrants and stuff we do in town and East Palaka um, to, to refill the trucks. So that was just an idea of a way to strategically place some water refill points. You approved some in last year's budget. I'm just not a big fan of the, the dry hydrant idea as much as I was like just strategically placing high volume wells around the county whether it's a potato field or whatever, you know, where we had fire department hookups to where we could get, they don't care where you get your water from as long as you get it there. So that was just an idea just trying to point, put places on a map to where we can start figuring out where to place these things to refill our fire trucks. Um, replacement of fire engines. We have 18 frontline fire trucks. Um, fire engines, that doesn't include tankers. Um, so you start doing a replacement on those, they're supposed to spend 10 years in the front and 10 years in the back and go away. Um, but now we've still got uh, trucks from 1996 on the front line. So uh, that was the way that, you know, that's why we included two more in this year's budget to try to start getting some of those vehicles replaced. Um, and the $24,000 for eight ice machines, we pay $130 a month lease on an ice machine times eight. So this was my way of saying, all right, we'll just go ahead and bite the bullet, buy the ice machines, for three thousand dollars, we look. You can get ones on online for about three grand, and we'll quit leasing. Every one of these departments is paying one hundred and thirty dollars a month for ice machine leases. So this was just a one-time buyout. We'd be paid for them in year two. They come with a minimum of a three-year warranty. So uh, Nicholson's Ice up in Placa costs us one hundred thirty dollars a month per station. I've had mine for about. 15 years. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's why, that's why I want to take one time and quit leasing and just so purchase ice machines. That's very fortunate because mine don't last that long. I replace them about every three or four years, it wow. seems like. And one of them's in the saltwater environment. The other one's in San Mateo. But the one in San Mateo, I might get four years out of it. And I'm 
replacing the top, which is not as much as replacing the whole thing, bin and all. But right, this was a one-time purchase to start. This that way, we're, you know, if we do have to replace ice machine after four years, we're, we're still, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a station ahead ahead of the money. So that's the reason why we put in there it was just a one-time, just cash out purchase and just buy new ice machines and put in these places so these departments will quit. I don't disagree. Or, or if we can money. find the money, I don't disagree. Yeah, it, it's 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 in the volunteer fire budgets. They already got them there. They're they're already paying it. So one thing I did was ask for one time so that. They already have half the money budgeted and allocated for next year, so this would just be the other half, kick it in and be done and, sure. and, and, and quit leasing. So that's the reason why it's there. Okay, Director Grimes, uh, Mr. Rawls, you have the floor. So you're saying you have, I guess, eight, 18 Class A pumpers, right? That's your frontline vehicles? That's correct. There's there's 18 across the county, yes, sir. And if you change, if you start started changing them out now, you're, you're, you're expecting 10 years frontline, and then you can cycle them to the back for 10 years. Um, you're you're basically on a on a five year rotation period. Should be, but I mean we're pushing it out to ten. I mean to be honest with you. All right. Um, are, is there any chance? I know that there's minimum requirements to, for it to be a Class A. Are you required to have Class A response um, for ISO? No, no, no. You just okay. get required to have a, you're required to have a, a, the capability. So, in any chance of having something that's more of a, a rural response fire truck than the, the ones that we have now absolutely we, we've looked in at those but i mean it got down to sometimes where it's, where it's the folks that have the ability to work on them and our parts availabilities and you know our mechanics are familiar with these apparatus we looked at trying to get more of a rule based or versus staying with the like kind we've been buying right and there's only like a fifteen thousand dollar difference between what we're buying now and switching complete gears so with our folks that were you know they're already used to working on this this kind that's got this button and they already got parts and stuff purchased and procured and sitting there waiting we just didn't feel like it was worth the transition at this time okay um i, I wrote down draw, draw hydrants um so is, is your a version of that that somebody has to draft out of it to get the water or yeah dry hydrants they do uh we don't really have the manpower to set people at, at a at a, at a, okay, at a so drafting a source so we were just about, wanting to okay. get somewhere where you could hit a switch fill a fire truck but more or less a fire hydrant out in the middle of nowhere it's got a power on and off switch that to me was better than you know and what happened is we learned in the, in the river with the tidal surge going up and down and left and or, you know north and south or whatever the, the when the tide moves and the, and the water elevation raised is it breaks the pipes off that are in the river so um, we're steady replacing joints of pipe that are that are broke off, so they really didn't work. They're better in static water sources, lakes, ponds, stuff like that. And the area we have them in the river, so we're able to use our turbo drafts that we have on our trucks now to get us some credits in there around the river area. This is for beyond the river. This is the 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 area between Fruitland and Crescent City where you got a long drive to go get any type of water somewhere, probably around like uh, Mr. Tilton's landfill there, Mr. Troxel's places to have a, a strategic place water source in that area, so they don't have to drive clear to the Georgetown fire station or all the way into Crescent City. It gives them an area somewhere in the middle to, to start uh, filling their trucks back up. Are you having a tank and a pump or just a well and a... I was just thinking a well with a big pump versus having to maintain two pumps. Okay. Um, are we working toward a, an integrated fire and rescue service where everybody's dual certified? Oh, yeah, yeah. Our folks are... Yeah, we're doing that now. Matter of fact, we've got five people in... in front, right now, we've got five paramedics in fire school finishing up their last eight weeks. So as we hired them as single cert medics, they've now transitioned. So the first five, that's all we had the budget to do. We got the first five going. Um, and we can't really, in the system, you know, you're going to get so many people a day to swap with you right. and, and work your shifts. So, I mean, it's not costing us any overtime. The folks are just, uh, you're swapping with me. I'll work for you today. I'll pay you back over the weekend when you don't have class. So our first five are in, in school now, uh, becoming dual certified. But I think with, the, it, with those five coming through, we only have 14 single certs left out of the 100. Awesome. So. Um, you mentioned minimum manning. So the, does our current, the, the, the current plan that you're working right now, does it meet the, the NFPA's requirement or re recommendation for minimum staffing? On a no, but I mean, to be fair, I don't think any county or city in the world can afford the NFP recommendation for minimum staffing. You can't do it. We can't do it. Jacksonville can't do it. Houston can't do it. We can't do it either. I mean, they're wanting you to have four men on every single fire engine, six on every ladder truck. We can't get there. I mean, to be honest with you, we're doing our best with what we got here. So I would never try to bring that to you guys because we can't afford it. I mean, Orange County is just now putting a fourth person on a fire truck. So um, we can't get there either. I mean, to, to meet the, if you were talking, referencing the two in, two out, there's a that's, lot. That's what I'm talking, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we can get there. I mean, 
the rules, you know, there's, they're there. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of exceptions to those rules, and they're all written. I'm not going to go into them today, but they're, they're written. I mean, you don't have to have it immediately. Um, and that people can have other assignments. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting really close between with our dual certified folks on rescue and our, and our fire engines. My, my area is just, you know, the, the, <clears throat> the geographic areas where we have a, a long response time would be my biggest thing I'm trying to push in right now. Right. And what, is, what are you looking for since you said response time? What are you, what are you averaging right now? What are you looking for? I don't know. The, I was actually going to have that report pulled, so I, I, I'd probably defer that answer for now if I could uh, to see where, what difference we've made with the steps we've already currently made how far down that number has come. And it may be within a livable number. You know, I think everybody should see, see a fire truck within 10 to 15 minutes. Well, I'd, you know, I'd wait till we have the right number for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I will, I, absolutely. And I, and I can pull those records. And well, it, 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 I just don't you. have them for you. The conversation that I was listening to earlier on, on putting the, the mobile homes out in the community, um, there's no reason why you can't put a fire truck underneath an awning just as quick as an ambulance. And, you know, when I first started working here, that's what we had was mobile homes in the community. Um, so it, it is, is the thought only for ambulances when you look at these, can we not call them rural fire stations that have a, 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 an ambulance and a fire truck? You, you could, but I mean, the only thing I want to say is, you know, if, if you go really into the building code, you know, and I, I know we don't want to get in this debate today. When no, you I, I got it, but you, you, you can put a fire sprinkler system in, in, a, in a mobile home. No, I You'll completely have understand, but the, but the housing of the fire truck underneath an awning is prohibited in the building code. Um, it actually shows that they're supposed to be within 130 mile an you hour. To, no, you're supposed to have a fire separation between the two. Correct, correct. But I, mean, I don't want to debate, you know, that. But I mean, we could. But um, there, there is reasons why they want, you know, fire stations built to where they can withstand hurricanes and, and foul weather because those trucks still have to run inside some of those conditions. I understand but, that, but at some point we've got to we've got to take our baby steps. I 100% I, I <clears> agree <throat> with you. I mean, I, I'm all about it. If we can put one in with on, underneath the awning until we can get one, one way to accomplish fire separation is to ten, a 10 foot separation. Correct. Then Correct. you can put a, a connective breezeway between the two. You can and just accomplish that. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. You done, Mr. Roth? Okay, Mr. Turner. Uh, if you have, do you have full employment on the fire side right now? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So have you had full employment most of this calendar year? Yes. Okay, and the EMS side too. Your yes. full employment. Yes, sir. Cool. We're, we're we're down four right now, but those just left. I mean, they some of them took some job opportunities. Some well, I understand they But we have we have go, applications to getting, fill those. You've been pretty much full this year. Yes, sir. Cool. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Pickin. Yeah, Jr. It kind of surprised me on the ice machine because I remember when I was just off the board, maybe been on the board of the Georgetown Fire Department, and they were y'all leased one down there, yeah. right? Okay, so the eight, what do what the other stations do? Do they maintain their own or whatever? Well, I mean, if we want to take, for instance, Crest, the city of Crescent City, they bought theirs. Um, Pomona Park bought theirs. Um, so there is, some, there is some owned ones out there, but we're still leasing eight of them throughout the, how many departments? Not all departments have them. Some have chosen to have them, some haven't. But s some people own theirs. And then this is just a remaining balance of the eight or nine that we're paying for every single year at $130 a month. Okay, I appreciate you looking into that because... Uh because it was going the other way, I thought, is where leasing was better than trying to own one of those things. Well, then, um, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, we started looking at the prices on them. I mean, you can buy them relatively inexpensive with a five-year warranty on them. So. Okay. All right, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. Do we need to go? <clears throat> Gentlemen, what is your pleasure? Do you want to go down the next page, or we good for on the financials? I'm good. Just go to I'm good. Part. So if not, thank you, JR. Uh, Mr. Grimes, we appreciate that. Uh, and we'll go to our executive director of public works, Mr. Troxel. Here you go. I got you one right here. Can you hear me? No? Yeah, we can. There we go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting down there. So this is a general fund department it's within uh, public works. We got the fleet and general services. Some of the events that happened in uh, 2021, uh, we did have one of our heavy equipment lifts uh, go down. This year we have not been able to fix it. It's it's so it's com it's completely down. Um, but one of the good things that happened was we worked with fire rescue and we were able to uh, ship one of our employees uh, from from the shop over there that he does does nothing but go around to the different stations and does the PM for their, their equipment has worked really well. Um, and, but another bad thing that happened today or this year was uh, one to two of our diesel pumps at the gas station is now completely out. There's no fixing it. So. You know, we have we have two um, diesel pumps and then two regular gas pumps, and one of the diesel pumps there is completely shot. 
Um, so you'll see that a little bit later. On the general services side, uh, we did have several uh, of our older HVAC mechanical equipment. It did catastrophically fail, so we did have to replace. Uh, we replaced three. We're trying to. We're getting the uh, cost for the fourth one here in planning and development in the backside. For FY22, um, staffing changes. You don't see any for fleet because I'm not asking for any more for fleet. Um, on the general services side, there is uh, three three folks we're asking for. One is a construction manager to assist the county in all all manners of construction throughout the throughout the different uh, shops and everything. And then two tradesmen for our general services folks. Uh, we have over 200 plus facilities or locations that we do maintenance on, with only uh, with only a handful of, of tradesmen. Uh, and so if I can get two more, uh, that will that will help share the workload. We're just doing mainly just going around putting out fires or uh, trying to do the emergency work and we can't get to any PMs. Some of our capital requests we're looking for is uh, to get uh, two new crew cab pickup trucks for, for general, general services folks. Uh, they are older older vehicles as well. And then we're also looking for a uh, towable 30, 34 foot boom lift. Uh, when we have them now, we can, we can rent them from Sunbelt Rental. Um, but if we have one on, on station, we could use it a lot more often. And we, that's what we use to trim trees throughout the, throughout the county or, or change light, light fixtures in the parking lots throughout, throughout the county as well. I'm asking for $220,000 to replace four HVAC units. I'm not sure which four yet, uh, but there will be the old R22 HVAC or systems we have out, out throughout the county. Um, we're still getting a count of all of all the, the the old HVAC units throughout the county, um, and with the new iWork system that we that we we got the, the general services folks, uh, we can now capture all that data in there so we have it. Uh, so we're working through that process. We're asking for four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for a roof replacement for the remainder. I call the remainder of the government complex here. It's the old Save a Lot store. Uh, that's what the, the guys call it. It's the vacant portion that's over the middle of this, this building. And last time I talked with a roofer, so that's plenty of money to, to make that happen for next year. And we also have in here $50,000 for the tax collector roof. Um, I did get that put out for bid this year, so we'll see. I put that one in the end where the video visitation was for the, uh, for the sheriff's office. Those two were, were scheduled for this year. Those things will be out for bid here shortly. Uh, I just don't know what those bids are going to come back in. I think those were a little lightly funded last year or this year, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. So that, that could be a rollover uh, to next year. That's why that's still in here. Uh, capital request for fleet services. Uh, we do have talked about the one uh, drive on lift that, that failed. Um, I'm asking for two because the other one on the other side of the, uh, the facility has is, is, is reached its useful life as well. And then uh, a, a transport trailer. Um, for $25,000. Transport trailer uh, won't just be used by, by fleet. It will also be used by public works when we transport uh, our, our, our uh, loaders or our backhoes around. But it will be used by several different departments. And also fleet services, their service truck is, is, is uh, also reaches its useful life. And that's 50000 because we've got to outfit it with all the stuff on it. And then he, he's asking for a uh, $45,000 roll-off tow truck. Um, currently, we, we usually contract with Johnson's Towing or whatever, but we could, we could do that as well, but it's, it's with a uh, roll-off uh, uh, tow truck. Some of the operational changes. Um, I would like to add about twenty grand for uh, professional services to do maybe some small designs or studies throughout the county for the different buildings that we, that we go into to, to repair. Uh, and for contractual services, an additional $50,000, again, for aging facilities and increased maintenance costs throughout these buildings. That wouldn't be professional service. That would just be you know, painting or, 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 um, or maybe some structural walls we need to build here and there. Um, and then for plumbing and electric, I'm asking for another about $10,000 and, and, and just parts and pieces for plumbing and electric repair throughout the buildings. Um, and $5,000 increased cost of utilities. We pay most of the utilities for, for, for the county through general services. So uh, I know electric is going to increase. We've already got an FPL said they're going to increase their rates, and I'm assuming 
uh, Clay Electric will as well. <clears throat> We're asking for some, some training dollars for HVAC, HVAC certification for another, another person and uh, send someone to Locksmith School. And the last, last one on this line is uh, $30,000 for uh, parts and pieces for our HVAC repair and, and maintenance throughout the county as well. Uh, again, even though I hopefully can replace four, four of the older HVAC units uh, that we have throughout the county, uh, all the other ones are still old and, and, and need a lot of, a lot of TLC. Clarinet, do you guys have any questions on, okay. on general Mr. services Rolf? or fleet? Okay. Um, so the, uh, the position you're talking about, um, the construction manager, can that be also used, utilized to help uh, fire um, with their construction and planning and development with the uh, animal services? Oh, absolutely. That was, I, I envision that as being the construction manager for, for any, any, any entity that needs it throughout the county. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't just be for general services or public works. All right. Um, did I understand you correctly? You said that y'all cannot get to preventative maintenance right now? Absolutely. We cannot do preventative maintenance throughout the buildings. Uh, I, have, I have one, one HVAC, one plumber, one electrician, and two tradesmen and a supervisor. How many square feet do you manage? I've never added up the square footage, but it's, it, it's a lot. Okay. But we, we do a lot of... They do a lot of stuff throughout the county, whether it's, you know, they even pick up trash in, in, the, in different places. They, you know, they help move furniture when pe po folks need to move furniture throughout the county. Uh, they, they, just, they, they, they do a lot of stuff. And with only three, two maintenance workers, one supervisor and one electrician and one HVAC and one plumber, uh, it's hard to, hard to get to any preventive maintenance. Okay. You know, it's, and you said <clears throat> the, the last unit you were fixing to change the AC units, that takes to gets us off R22. No, 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 oh. no. This is uh, there. We've got plenty of R22 units You're out finding there. Finding R22. It, it's hard because uh, they don't make R22 anymore. No. We have to, they, the, the contractors are, haven't been able to find it. But are y'all using a drop-in replacement for it, or are they using R22? No, they're still using R22. We're paying a fortune for that then. Uh, yes, we are. Okay. How many more of those units do we have left laying around? Uh, they haven't done all the survey of all the buildings yet, but. The okay. four we're going to replace this year are our are, 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 are 22 units. Hmm. Okay. Um, the roll-off, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You, you want a roll-off? Tow truck. All right. For just like for small cars and trucks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're not going to get much of one for 45 grand. That you're not going to haul a big... No, no. Big no, that, we'll, we'll have to contract that out through. Uh, I think Johnson does that with the large, large vehicles as well. Okay. And then you... you Last question, you mentioned getting a, a transport trailer. Um, is that going to be, you said that it could transport your dump trucks? No, it'd be our, uh, our uh, front end loaders or our uh, backhoes, because uh, I don't have a good way of transforming them in a backhoe okay. unless it's a, one of our large uh, uh, low boy a trailers. To pull it. What's that? What do you have to pull it? Do you have a truck to pull? I mean, <clears throat> we have, you have a, a trailer, 20,000 pound trailer, you're going to have to have a truck that can accommodate that. Our, our, our dump trucks will be able to pull them, and they have pinnacle hooks on okay. them. Or, or Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Turner. Yeah, I'm a little confused here. Um, seems like one day we're talking about subbing more out and trying to spend local and trying to outsource more things. And then the next day is budget time and we want five more people to come in here and do stuff in-house. So I guess I'm getting a little confused on what we're wanting to do. Are we wanting to to uh, reduce government and lower taxes, or are we wanting to uh, to upsize government and grow government and charge more taxes? Because you don't do one without the other. So I guess that's what I'm looking at here. Um, you know, I know that some of this stuff is needed. I get it. Things wear out and what have you. But if you don't have the money, you can't buy it. I don't care. Y'all say, what do you want? Say, I've got to have this, or the world's going to fall apart. The world didn't fall apart this year, and you didn't have it. So I'm not trying to aim this at you guys. I'm just saying we're $14.5 million in the red on this budget presentation today. Something can't be funded. We can sit up here all we want, and we can say, hey, guys, I'd love to have. 
have you? Hell, Jr. I wish you could buy six new fire trucks this year. I really do, but we can't. That's the reality of it. So somewhere along here, I guess after we're done, we're going to go back to what you started out with, Mr. Chairman, is this is a list of things that we'd like to see you all do. Now go do your job and bring us the budget back. Balanced, I'm assuming. That's what that I, was one of your things that you said earlier, your right. six, five or six things you had. So um, I guess we could talk about all this we want. Y'all can fight for your lift or your truck or your whatever you want, but it's still going to have to go back to staff because I haven't heard a commissioner, one commissioner up here today say anything except for that truck. I mean, the uh, vehicle that uh, Larry drives around all the time. <laughs> uh, except for that one. Sorry. But couldn't help it, buddy. Uh, except for that one vehicle that was basically said that went, none of us really want it that much. And so other than that one vehicle, I haven't heard that we've cut anything. We've gone, yes, JR, I absolutely believe you. We know you need that. Yes, Mr. Troanna, you're right. You need every bit of that and then some probably. Same with you, Angela, and same with Mike now. And so, but the point is, is somebody somewhere has got to cut 14.6 million bucks out of this budget as of the revenues we've got to work with at this time. That's the bottom line. So we can do all the feel good we want and what have you, but somebody somewhere has got to cut the money out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Mr. Adams, that? I think I get what you're saying, and, and but I've heard between the lines that, you know, Mr. Toronto hinted at maybe we don't have to do all four trucks in one year. It, it was, has been hinted at that it is, doesn't all necessarily have to be in this budget, so it still needs, and they, they, they'd love to get them, I'm sure, all this year. But I, but because I'm hearing that, I'm not, I guess, taking as hard of a stance to mean let's only do one of those trucks, because um, I want to hear what everything they need. So I, I am hearing some of that from them. That's why I'm not... I guess getting too excited about it. And I understand that we have to have a balance, but I mean, that's state requirement. We don't have a choice, so that's that's gonna happen mm -hmm. however we cut the cheese. Um, as far as yours goes, I mean, the opportunity for outsourcing to me is still mowing. I mean, that's been something I've said since I took office, it's something I said when I was running. I think that's a key, and, and because that's not a net new expense, you probably didn't bring it up, but that would be an area where I would think you could get some costs. Well, that's in that's in the next section. Okay, so that, I mean, that, that's an area that maybe is in here, so. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamza. Mr. Rawls? I, I, I think we needed to hear this. I think the public needs to hear this. And, you know, at one point I, I walked into Matt Reynolds' office when he was, he was the uh, deputy administrator, and his answer to me was, you know, if you'll just show us what to cut, we'll start cutting from the budget. So I think what we need to give staff is a direction of what we want them to do, what services, what level of services we want them to provide. I don't think they can actually do that to any, any um, uh, satisfaction for us without us telling them um, what level of service we want. So if, if fire rescue is important, then we have to fund fire rescue at a level. If, um, if our buildings are to be maintained and not fall down around us, or if we're, you know, I, I, I sat through a meeting um, last week before last where the air conditioner's not working over in, um, over in uh, plan development, and I didn't die. It's, it's not killing anybody to sit in the heat, but it's not pleasant. But then the people that are in the meeting, their citizens are asking, why don't we fix the air conditioning? So um, it, at some point, all the chickens will come to roost. And, and it, this, is, this is catching up to us at a, at a much more rapid pace. And every year that we stick our head in the sand and say, well, we'll just deal with this next year, next year, next year. And, and then we, what we haven't had is a conversation about looking at revenue sources. I think this is where, you know, if we're looking at a $14 million shortfall, maybe we should be looking at what we can be doing to encourage folks to participate in our taxing system that don't participate in it or have fees for folks that don't pay fees right now for services like planning development services or fire rescue, you know, if they're, if they're riding the ambulances. There's other ways that we can get around this. But, um, I, you know, I, I think by saying, looking at the ad valorem um, assessed value of homes, whether it's, it's high or low this year, um, isn't going to get us where we where we want to be. Um, you know, I think we need to have a frank conversation with the public. And everybody talks about, um, you know, we're we're poised for growth. Well, you can't grow unless you have the infrastructure to support the growth. And part of that infrastructure is exactly what we're talking about right now. At some point, the um, Brenda Bridges is going to outgrow the office that she's in. That office is going to be too small one day. They're going to have to move. Who knows when that day will come? But if we're not making preparations for it right now. <clears throat> This, this conversation will not be easier next year 
if we if we don't fund any of this it'll just get worse and worse and worse and the first time that somebody drops a patient with a, um, a, a, a pregnant patient on a stretcher and I had this happen to me then then all of a sudden you get new stretchers because somebody screamed you dropped my wife on the ground from this high because the stretcher failed you know or we could be proactive and do preventive maintenance and I, that was when, when I heard him I said I wrote to myself preventive maintenance question mark if we're not doing preventative maintenance, then we're just reacting. I don't. I personally don't want to be known as a commissioner that was just willing to react to whatever fires crept up, and, and said, "Okay, we'll put that out when it gets here. Let's not let's not be proactive." I, I want to be proactive. I want to take a position that we take care of what's been entrusted to us, and not wait till the roof start leaking. Not wait till somebody steps through the floor of a of a failed building because of roof leak. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to try to keep this real short. I'm not in favor of raising taxes. I'm not in favor of, of raising fees. That fees are just taxes. I don't care how you cut it. And uh, I think that the county needs to live within their means, which means that we, like I said earlier, when this first started today, we're way ahead of this game because we don't even know what our revenues are going to be for last year to build a budget to. So until we find that out, I, f I fail to see why we're going through the motion. Sure, we could do the feel good stuff, which is what we're doing today. <clears throat> you don't think that I'm smart enough. I didn't know JR needed ambulances or he was gonna need some, or that Mr. Troxell needs things or, or that the building department needs. I can't walk by and see off his office, <clears throat> excuse me, that he don't call me and say, I need this, I need that or whatever. I'd like to have a Learjet fly around the country on the weekends. I can't afford it. So I don't have one. So it ain't like, <laughs> it, it ain't like that I don't want one. It's that, that we've got to learn to live within our means in the county. We do a pretty dang good job at it right now, living within our means. But this budget's $14.5 million out of whack. So I'm sorry, you can talk about whatever you want, but I think our biggest, <clears throat> our biggest, uh, obstacle here is going to be how to whittle this down without upset setting everybody in the county that's gone out of their way to come to work hard at coming up with this list of things that that they wanted i think that's going to be a real issue and i think it's going to be if we're not very careful i think it could be a morale problem on it because we just can't afford all the things that were asked for just can't afford it so uh, that's all mr chairman thank you thank you mr mr adams that so in, in any organization to become strategic requires you to have all the information available to you. The only way for us to do this and facilitate it properly is for the five of us to be in front of a group of people that gives us information so we can make the best decisions possible as a group. Um, we all have our different priorities. We all have our different ideas on what should be done. The only way we can do that cumulatively with the five of us is if we hear all the same information together, we make our decisions together based upon the information we're given. I mean, I have all kinds of ideas if we want to get strategic. We have the front of this building. We have all this property on that road. This lot is almost never full. Should we maybe use that out lot to sell off some pieces and put some businesses out there that drives your taxes higher? And there's all kinds of strategic things that can come from these conversations. The only way we can do it is if we sit here together and listen, and then we respond. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. All right. <clears throat> One thing I have, Mr. Troxell, just a thought, um, and I do appreciate you bringing this to us. When you look at a $25,000 transport trailer and a $45,000 roll-off tow truck, could you not combine the two and get, no, you can't. Okay. I just had that thought. That was my mind. question. <laughs> okay. All right. Does anybody, Mr. Pickens? Comment. I just, Mike, I assume that you did the numbers and you must be spending quite a bit on on towing vehicles and then i've never understood why we're driving some pieces of equipment to a job rather than hauling them on a trailer so right. i assume that that's what you are figuring out that it would save time and money yes to do that mr adams that so i'll just add this the one other benefit to listen to everyone's concerns is when i hear we talk about parks and rec needs to be able to move nets right you have a trailer we'll be able to move nets with right so why can't we just use that trailer and ask them to move the nets? That type of thing. If we didn't hear that there's that need and then that there's that trailer, you know, we could kill two birds with one stone in many ways. So that's what the value of this is to me. Thank you. All right. Chairman, you want me to mash my button? No, no, Mr. Turner. <laughs> well, I'll be happy to mash it. You don't have to mash it. Just to keep you happy. I'm, I'm happy already. Okay. 
Um, you know, I, I didn't say anything about the trailer. I think you needed a transport trailer, probably the worst thing you needed around here in the last three years since I've been here. It's just the last public works director didn't believe he needed it. He thought he could drive them around easier than he could haul them around, so he wore out his equipment. I even saw one day where he drove a mowing tractor that needed some work to Jacksonville to ring power. He drove the tractor? He drove his tractor, and somebody followed him in a pickup truck because they didn't have it. Yeah, I'm just telling you, I know that to be a fact. So, yes, we do need a transport trailer. We do need certain things. I get that. Um, but uh, I don't know that there ain't some things in here that we could also cut back on. I agree. All right, commissioners, <laughs> do we need to go through the next page or we're good? We'll move no, on sure, to the 101 fund. Mr. Troxel. You're up. All right. Some of the events in, in, in this year, 2021, uh, we did accomplish four what I call four major cross culvert replacements throughout the county. Hunter Road, Silver Lake Drive, Cousintown Road, and Taylor Fury Road, um, among some other smaller ones throughout the county. Uh, obviously, Barton Bridge is being renovated as we speak, uh, hopefully being open 1st of, Jul 1st of July for uh, unrestricted traffic on the new section. Uh, guardrail replacement project we have gone through and gone went through every guardrail out there and so we still have money in this year's budget to work work through that process uh, so we've got that going we did implement our new iWork software system uh, for for fleet for general services and for uh, public works and it's been working great it's so much better it was sort of like the AS 400 system the older one that we used was the same with the with our old uh, software system this is so much better uh, unfortunately we did lose our department of corrections uh, inmate labor crews uh, until potentially july uh, although we are expecting to get them back here roughly around july again that'll help us out a lot especially in the mowing mowing arena and some of the other good things that happened this year we did where we were able to lease two of our boom mowers the mower max boom mowers uh, it's saved us a lot of time and then uh, we haven't got all five tractors in yet. Hopefully by the end of the month, we'll get the all five in, uh, but the five lease tractors for our mowing crew. Some of the changes that we're looking at in 2022, and this is, um, there's eight, eight folks on the, on the public work side. That is, man, that is all drainage stuff. Um, our largest work orders that we have out there. It's not mowing, it's not grading, it is drainage. Uh, with, with the very limited crews out we have out there, again, I can't do any preventive maintenance and drainage. It's all, hey, I got a drainage issue on this road, and we schedule it, and sometimes it's three, six, seven months, depending on how long the backlog is and how severe it is. Um, there's some of them that we get that's not very critical uh, so they, it might be six, eight, nine months before we can actually get there to, to fix our drainage issue. So, so that's what that's what those staffing changes are. Some of our capital requests again are uh, we have a lot of pickup trucks, and f four of them are, are, are rather old. Uh, two on our engineering department and two for our road department. Um, would like to ask for another hundred thousand in guardrail upgrades and maintenance again for next year. Uh, another seven hundred thousand dollars in bridge maintenance and repair for next year. Um, we had it in this year's budget, but that was taken at Barton Bridge. I'm looking at replacing the last of our, our boom mowers with the new mower max mower. Again, that's a purchase cost. We could do lease to, lease to purchase like we did the other two, and that's only about 38000 a year. But that, that is the purchase cost. And then another $36,000 to purchase the mulching head, like uh, a fecon head, and a front, a front mower for those mower max machines that, that, that can even make them more dual purpose throughout the, throughout the county. We haven't bought any dump trucks in, in forever. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Turner. Didn't we vote to buy you a mulching head this year or was that, we just discussed, I thought we, we voted to buy you one and now. I don't remember voting on it, we've talked about it, but. Okay, it was just a discussion because I thought we had voted to go ahead and buy a mulching head this year. I, think I, I thought we did too. We'll go back and look at the record one shows to verify, Mr. It. Chairman. You know, one thing, well, we'll talk about it later, but when we sit around here sometimes in consensus and I think staff gets confused about what we're talking about. So we need to kind of whittle that down and that's going to be on my list of things when we come back. Sounds like he just got permission but, to buy one. Well, that's what it sounded like to me, sir. Just checking. 
<laughs> Just that one thing. He's out, out. He's got money or out of he's money? Out of money. He's out okay. of money. <laughs> okay, Mr. Trump. But then uh, the dump trucks, uh, we haven't bought a new dump truck in, in years. Uh, well, when I say dump trucks, so some of these will be the smaller six pack, five ton or five, five ton units, not, not the big the 12, 12 tons or whatever, the larger ones we have. Uh, I think we have more of a need for the smaller ones than the larger ones throughout the county. Mr. Troxell, Mr. Turner. I thought good. we were buying one a year. I don't think we bought one this year, but I thought while Press was here, we got one a year the last two years, because uh, every year I was here. It's, it's been, well, I've been this, oh, of course, I just got here a year ago, and they didn't buy one lot the year before or this year, uh, and I don't think they bought one the year before. Well, they might have bought one the year before. That was when Press was here, but. Um, okay. It might have been approved, and they just didn't buy it. I, I, it wasn't in Could've the budget that, I know, that I've seen. Could have been. So. Could have been. Could be. It might have been a monetary issue. Yep, I get it. Go okay, ahead. we're good? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're fine. So far, you're getting everything you want. Uh. <laughs> so far, you're able to speak your piece. What? Yeah. I just did. Yeah. Some of the miscellaneous equipment, uh, you'll see down here, uh, Public Works does not have a skid steer um, or attachments for our road department. We have one for a utilities department, but uh, it's really hard for some of us to get some of these down dirt roads with our with our large uh, grade alls. Uh, and then some other some other attachments you can buy that the skid steer is just makes it so much more versatile throughout the county. Uh, so that 52, 55-2 is a skid steer with, with several attachments for our roads department. Um, all right, I promised I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to do this. Okay. Because maybe it's getting late in the day or maybe I'm, but I have to agree with the other commissioners on some things here. If you bought a skid steer with forks on it, couldn't you use that for a haul your stuff? So this conversation is a pretty good thing that maybe we have a centralized equipment place and JR needs to move 10 pallets of water on a, <laughs> they're going to need it at the same time. I'm the only person in public county who uses skids here to haul water. Oh, I know they're going to need it. I apologize, commissioners. They're saying I need to buy it to keep it up roughly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are an enterprise fund. And that's <laughs> we'll get to that one in yeah, just a yeah. moment. That's, that's why he's going last. So he's got a list of things he needs to purchase. <laughs> but, hey, my point of this is, I mean, slap a pair of forks on it, and you've got a dual-purpose machine here. Everybody can use it. I mean, we don't mark our territory, and life's good. Go if you need one for one day, go rent one. I mean, it costs a couple hundred bucks. You can have ship it in, rent it. I mean, right. for a couple of days or something. If, that, if you're not needing it a lot, right? But you're well, talking we, something you're going to use all the we time. We would, we would use it quite uh, sure every every week. I may so, be talking right. about maybe Jr. might not need it every day for that particular. I know he wants a forklift, but I the he may not use that particular piece of equipment every day, um, and it may not be a bad thing to, you know, to keep it at the landfill. I know he's got a lot of things out there he could use it for. Maybe he'll loan it to you. All right, continue. Well, on. But I, but I also got a lease cost for that. For, for, enterprise for, for, for some stuff. So that 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 is the purchase price off the state term contract. So, um, surveying equipment. Um, we did, we did get a new GPS for our surveying equipment in 2016. However, this cost $28,000 is for the total station. Uh, our current total station was bought in 2008. Uh, it can no longer, the software can no longer be upgraded on that. So I'm going to have to, to get one sooner or later. Um, and it's going to be sooner, I believe, because the, the software cannot be upgraded on that. And then the last thing on miscellaneous equipment is uh, land pride mowing decks. Again, we got the 15 footers, uh, great, uh, and we could continue to use those. But a lot of our smaller roads are they're actually too big. So I'm, uh, this is just a cost for for two 10 foot land pride mowing decks. Uh, that will be, I think, much better on some of our smaller roads. Again, I think when they went and bought these years ago, they wanted all for the old director wanted 15 footers. Um, it makes sense down 309 and some of those larger larger roads. But most of our roads, they're, they stick out more in the road than they do cut grass so that's what those are I thought, mr turner i thought we were gonna look at taking a lot of the smaller roads and pulling them out and see if it wouldn't be more cost effective to uh, sub those out or outsource them you will see i'm i'm starting that process in this next uh on our operational changes down here 
Um, so you want new mowers and start the process and breaking out roads where you don't have to mow them? No, I, just, no, I don't want new mowers. Like, you got me the mower. I need the decks, the 10 foot decks to replace the 15 foot deck, a couple of 15 foot decks that I got. I'm being a smart ass. <laughs> And some of the operational changes, uh, just an additional $20,000 over last year's uh, budget for professional service for engineering studies. Uh, we've been utilizing a lot of camera studies throughout the, throughout the county to, to, to do non-destructive testing on some of our, or inspections on some of our pipes to determine do we really need to, to replace this or, or what's going on. Um, and then maybe some of the other like 30, 37 5 for other contractual service or miscellaneous designs and solar borings throughout the county that we need to do. I'm anticipating a uh, rather sizable increase in the, the ferry services at Drayton Island. Uh, Karen's uh, contract will be up in December and uh, we're going to send that out for bid and she says she's not going to bid on it next year and if she does not I actually believe that's going to go up quite a bit. So I put $10,000 increase in that. Uh, put a 40,000 increase in road striping. Um, we barely got by with a with a 60 grand this year. We had to go out several times for bid, and then even that, the the guy questioned when when we get finished up, um, and that was 60,000. And roads are, are are there's more roads now that need striped than than ever before. We're we're, bu we're building roads every year, uh, and so the costs are increasing every year so I just that, that would be a even a hundred thousand dollars in roadway striping uh, over last year's budget and then two thousand dollars in signs and markings uh, for the increased material cost and, and and metal cost that we use we've had a lot of requests this this year for new signage that wasn't there before um, the littering signs throughout the county here and there so um, we can put them up, but it's again it costs it costs money um, to make that happen. Uh, next next thing down the list is additional 18 grand for mowing contract increase. Um, I want to start off with additional service for Edgefield, and then uh, I, I call the rails the trails maintenance, which is uh, the the multi-use trails. Um, contracting that piece out this year, see, seeing what it costs. Um, and, and start start there, and then then start working on the smaller smaller areas to maybe contract out some of that smaller mowing. Then one of the big line items is forty thousand dollars in fuel and oil increase cost. I our road our our stuff are out on the on the, on the road every single day, uh, and it's gonna the fuel costs are going to be extraordinarily high next year, I believe. And with that, we do a lot of uh, asphalt repair. I mean, we we get hot, we get a hot mix sometime, cold mix sometime. But with the oil prices going up, that's what's in asphalt, and I think that price is going to increase quite a bit. Then with our lime rock, sandbags, concrete bags, and all that other stuff we buy, those costs are going to go up as well. Just not just necessarily the materials, but the delivery costs for those uh, getting it, getting those to us. So that's our 101 okay. fund. Any questions for Mr. Troxell on the 101 fund? Mr. Ross? Um, <clears throat> on the, the miscellaneous equipment, you've got uh, $20,000 for the surveying equipment. Do you have any other equipment that's technology sensitive like that that we could be looking at in the next one, three, five years um, that would need to be? or maybe start pre-planning this year for budgeting for replacement because you said that was a 15 year old piece of equipment that they're no longer going to um, provide any kind of updates for the software so correct for the total station yeah you got a piece of junk now right or <clears throat> something for a museum mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm just wondering if you have other stuff like that laying around that's I mean our soft some of our software for AutoCAD is, is old but uh, I haven't really looked into AutoCAD but as far as pieces of equipment that, that our, our folks use that a total station is, is 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 mainly what we have in the engineering department. All right, and they, um, the money for the surveying equipment, um, is that the twenty thousand only for that one thing, or because you said you got new GPSs, but um, your, your GPSs aren't that new. And it's two thousand sixteen, but they were they were able to upgrade the software in that this year. So okay. he says he's now seeing more satellites than ever before. So that's why I didn't ask for the new GPS system for that for that for our surveying equipment. Because uh, he was able to update that this year, and, and it's working great. Okay. But that total station is also a, what he calls a robot. Right. Idea. So that includes that too. Yeah, it tracks you around and. Yeah. Yep. Um. 
the, the ferry the ferry operation um, <clears throat> do we have to provide that service I, be I believe so um. I mean, from, from a from a, a contractual perspective to, is a county required to provide a service like that for a very limited amount of homeowners I understood we were that's, we, that's something we is, can... interest, is it a state mandate or what why do we why, why don't we ask the homeowners on on that island to contract for themselves they're paying for it anyways um, I'm just wondering you know how do I explain to somebody in Barden that, that didn't have a bridge at this whole year because we we're working on it um, and yet you know, when the first the only meeting I've been down to down there they were all up in arms and they just got four million dollars on new ferry landings from the state of Florida but why you know I'd, I'd like I'd like an answer on that is that something that we're that we're mandated by the state of Florida to provide and I'll have to ask that question with, with Florida I'm not sure as a taxpayer I'd, I've, I've never been on that ferry. I, I would have no use to go to somebody else's island. It's a, it's a privately owned island, correct? No, it's not a privately owned island. Who owns the island? We own the road on the island. I, I thought we only owned like the first 100 feet of the road and everything the, else was theirs. I don't know. No. No, we, I don't what? think we own the road. We only own a very small we, portion of that road. We do maintenance on the road. But once, once or twice a year, we're supposed to go over it. Talking about Drayton Island. Drayton Island, yeah. correct. Yeah, we yeah. took the we took the road in and, and put it into maintenance. So, but um, I thought that we were required to provide that. Now we have discussed MSBU. You know, now the residents of that island will not want to discuss that. But well, I understand. But you're, you're talking about 30 or less homeowners, right? No, it's more than that. 40? I don't think it's that. I think there's less than that. I think it's like 16. I was 26, but, um, you know. I think there's 26 parcels, um, but I don't think there's 26 people that live out there. I wonder if because we got that DOT grant that helped with that, do we is that part of the agreement with DOT that we furnish? I mean, is this we don't, I'm with him. Is it, restore, is it historical or required? But you're talking about Fort Gates Ferry. No, well, Fort uh, Gates, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't operate the, the ferry. We just had to, we just, we just make sure the landings work. Um, but we do not operate the ferry at Fort Gates. Right. No, yeah. I know well, that. But we participate in Drayton insurance. Island. Drayton Island didn't, we got money from somewhere to buy a new ferry for Drayton Island. I don't know where that money came from. But I don't know. I think it was DOT. That was DOT. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Well, as part of that funding agreement that DOT bought a ferry for Drayton Island, did we have to furnish an operator? We'll have to go and look and have some conversations. We'll, we'll have to get legal involved and ask them those, those questions. But listen, whatever the direction is, we'll, we'll certainly do that. I know we are required to provide the landings uh, to both sides, but I, other than that, I, we'll have to check and see what our requirements carry on as far as maybe having a, a ferry operator or not. Okay. We'll certainly do that. Yeah, Ross, a, are you done? Um, <clears throat> and then um, on your, uh, your guardrail replacement, so you, you said that y'all didn't do any guardrail repair this year. I know at one point, Press Tompkins had told us that we were way behind the eight ball on like two or three generations behind on guardrail end caps and requirements from FDOT. Are we further out of compliance now or what? Well, that's what uh, we, we all we will we will work on the, the hundred thousand we got this year for guardrail. It should almost all be spent by the end of the year, uh, so we will get we will make a, a dent in that. Uh, this <coughs> extra hundred thousand is, is for more uh, for, Where for does next it, year. What would it take for us to catch up to what's required by the state of Florida to be in compliance? We just got the the final list the other day, so we'll have to go through that. But I can get that to you. Okay, I'm good. Okay, we talk about compliance, though. I mean. Uh, I'm going to call Mr. Pickens in just a minute. I don't want to make that term one of the concrete terms here because I caution Press Tompkins when he used that term. I mean, what's recommended is, is what we really need to look at, not Correct. that we're out of compliance. Correct. But we sure don't want the fiduciary responsibility of that word out there. Thank you. Mr. Pickens. Yeah, Mike, on the inmate cruise, you said we will get them back in July. And do you know it how? Won't, it won't be any sooner than July. Um, this is what they what they told us on the phone. Now we get, I'm hoping to get it back in Does July. Is there been any but. discussion on how many, besides the crew leader, how many how many inmate laborers we're going to get? Because it used to be like five, and then it got cut down to two or three. And well, I'm hoping to get a, a full complement of three crews of five when they start back up again. Uh, that's 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 what that's what we that's what we typically we're getting. Three crews um, of five. 
until the, the, the end of the year, you know, when some of our stuff has started getting down to two to three per crew. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, we contacted, uh, took the opportunity to call Mr. Schrader, I think it was, at uh, Department of Corrections in Tallahassee and had a conversation. I just wanted, uh, so we're all understanding that, yes, we have like $157,000 worth of contractual services we, we, we have uh, with uh, DOC every year for these crews. Uh, so we uh, inquired about the crews we weren't getting, and so they're no longer invoicing us. What they've done is they invoice us quarterly uh, for the crews, and because of, of COVID and all that, they have not been billing us. So the contractual services are still there. We just haven't had to pay any bills for it. And uh, we spoke with them uh, a couple weeks ago, and they wanted to know if we wanted to renew our contracts. And I said, uh, you know, that will depend on whether or not we, we're going to get our service. But the point was, is we went ahead, and, and I'll tell you that I, I agreed to go ahead and renew our contracts or bring them back for simple fact. We're not being invoiced for yeah. anything. Sure. And if we were not to renew our contract, we would lose our place in line for when they do come back to, to uh, offer that service. So it's a move. To me, it was a no-brainer. It was a no-cost uh, concern, and we didn't want to lose our place in line. So uh, we're not spending that money, but it is budgeted. So when we get those crews back, uh, we we can't afford uh, the the amount of labor for for the 157 thousand that we get from DOC. Mr. Pickens, you still have the floor. I'm done. I'm hitting the song. You done? Mm -hmm. Mr. Turner. No. Uh, yes. Uh, Mike, have you been full on staff this year? No. Okay, well, if we give you five more, does that mean you're going to get, we budgeted for five more that you can't fill? No, the mowers, we should be able to fill. It's, um, it's some of our maintenance crews and some other stuff that we're, we're, we're working on right now. Okay, so the ones, the, these are not ones you're having issues with getting people to operate? Not right, not as of now, no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any other questions on the, I have one, one more. Go ahead, more. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> to follow up with the Commissioner Turner's question, is there a reason why you can't fully staff? I mean, is there something that we can do to help you get fully staffed, or is it just nobody wants to work in Sutton County? How do I want to say? I think I believe one of the issues we're having is is, is the pay. Um, we typically pay uh, our, our maintenance maintenance repair workers that, that work there. Uh, make they start off at nine sixteen. It'll go up to ten. What are they maintaining? What's that? You said maintenance and repair. It's it's our, our maintenance workers that, that that do the flagging, do the you know the, the grunt work out there, you know, the shovels and some other stuff out in the ground. They make you know they start off at nine sixteen as we stand this year. If we were to hire one now, it'd start off at nine sixteen, and it'll, it'll go up to ten uh, next year. Again, that's uh, not a lot of money. Uh, some of our other other employees have been here a while. They make more than the minimum wage, but it's still ten twelve dollars an hour. Um, so it is that is a little tougher to to recruit uh, folks for us in the, in the maintenance uh, in the in the road crew. So. so is this something that that we need to? Is there are there provisions made in, in your request to be able to bring those salary those, those salary positions up um, to something that's more sustainable? It, well, for now it'll just be the three uh, percent that that we that we put in in the. In the in the budget for anybody that's ten dollars or above for this year. So, <clears throat> if I said of one hundred percent of the work that needs that needs to happen every year, just on a purely maintenance perspective, how much of that is is being accomplished versus how much is that needs to accomplish every year? In my opinion, it's less than half. I think we. I think. I think. We, in my opinion, I should be able to. Do preventative maintenance on ditches. I should be able to mow the grass at least six times a year, hmm. or have it mowed, whether it's personnel or contract. <laughs> uh, that, to me, that's a bare minimum. Um, so, so how, how do you, if, if, if the, the, you know, three percent is not going to get you anywhere. If you got an individual making ten dollars and fifty cents an hour, and they get a three percent bump, they're now making ten dollars and fifty cents an hour. Um, but What's going to happen immediately is that person making ten or eleven dollars an hour will experience the repercussion of everybody going from eight dollars to ten dollars. So the dollar value menu is out the door, and now if they do take their family out, it's going to cost more money. So effectively, they're going to, they're really going to get hit hard. Um, showing up to work on Monday morning, clean cut and sober, I would imagine is going to be a really tough thing to maintain for you, which means our ditches, our mowing, and all that other stuff that we require 
um, to maintain the county is, is going to get further and further beyond the eight ball. So I think there needs to be some serious consideration as we go for this budget on how we, and, and Angela, you said, you know, I, I like the term compression, compression. That, and that's what everybody else is using as you start to compress the pay scale. Um, the folks that are up here right now will actually be down here um, if we're not careful in a very short period of time. And <clears throat> I'm not going to say that we're going to have a mutiny in our hands, but I could imagine that at, that, at, at some point um, the private sector is going to look awfully attractive and you can throw all the benefits you want, all the retirement and all the health insurance at, at employees at the end of the day, if they can't make ends meet, it doesn't, it's not worth working here. So um, I think, I think that needs to be part of this discussion going forward is what we do to correct that and start, start not correcting all in one budget cycle. We've got four years before this thing really hits us um, between the eyes. But if, if we start making soft adjustments now, five years from now, we, we will come out a lot better than um, if we just wait to the last minute and then scramble for whatever position we can get. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Roll. Mr. Adams. One, one more question, we could. Have you ever done a salary survey against the um, our surrounding counties? Not assuming that they're they're hurting us as far as if somebody gets trained here and they have skills, do they go to work for other folks? Or? I have not. Uh, the only uh, the only exposure I have to that is we actually had someone from St. John's County come and use our spider and cleaned out the colonial, <coughs> colonial pines uh, um, lake. And uh, I thought I was talking to him, and he actually lives in Putnam County. He'd love to come work for us, but it's a it's it's a it's a it's a it's a pay issue. Um, oh, and what's the difference? It's quite a bit. He makes twenty one dollars an hour. Over what? Twenty one dollars an hour as a spider operator in Put in in, in St. John's County. Mr. Adams, that. So I mean, I, I understand this whole compression thing, but it's it also needs to be compared to the alternatives outside, right? Which is kind of where you're going a little bit. Um, but we also can't price ourselves out of affordability. It's a it's a catch twenty two you're in. But this is why I brought it up in January, I believe, when you were, we were looking at the I was looking at the openings that you had, and several were below the ten dollar an hour minimum wage. I'd like to see us not have a listing out there below ten. I think we only have two or three now, where before I think it was eight, but now it's like three on our listings. I look at it weekly, um, just where we're bringing people in. And again, I, I hope we can do some juxtaposition between what Mr. Rawls is saying, what I talked about earlier, where we try to catch up over the five years fairly evenly, instead of trying to just do it all at that last year where it's gonna be a, a huge jump where we're trying to help people. I get the, the concern that if you're making 15 and people catch up, all that stuff, but this hand wasn't given to us by our choice. So on some level, we have to accept that some of that's gonna happen and there's gonna be a little bit of fallout from it. I mean, if we make adjustments to every person that might leave because of pay, but we'll never catch up, so thanks. Thank you, Mr. Adams. That, any further questions on that? We're gonna take a three minute break.
Mr. Troxell, you're back up on 405 fun now. Outstanding. Wear many hats. Uh, some of the uh, uh, events in 2021, uh, we were able to slightly increase our customer base on the water water side by just about eight people. I can't. It was between eight and ten people. I can't remember exactly the number, but we did a, to get some new people on our water system, and then they. Uh, we were able to raise the cost of services for water and sewer this year. It was a, it was a minor increase, but it was an increase uh, to help cover our cost. Uh, and we also increased our uh, uh, tap fees for both as well. Um, this year, we did purchase a new tiller for their tractor at the water plant. Uh, that actually saved them one week in bed preparation. So when they were preparing their beds, it was just a little bit slightly wider uh, tiller to, to tow behind their, their current tractor they have, um, and it, it saved them over a week and, and, and time for those guys to do that. We also were able to get our, our 200 remote operating heads for our water system, and that really comes into play when we were doing our water our re meter reading at the end of every month, and it went down from uh, one week to read all the meters to a day and a half to two days, so mm -hmm. that helped out in our, in our, in our time time savings uh, for those folks. And we also engaged professional services for a water line study or in, in San Mateo. Uh, that'll help out um, eventually getting, getting more people onto our water system. For, for, for next year, uh, I'm proposing no new staff changes for the water, water and sewer folks. I do have a, a, a couple capital requests. One is a mini excavator for those folks. Um, I'm asking for a mid-sized one with, a, with two different buckets because, it's not, again, it's going to be a multi-use type of machine. It will be mainly be used by utilities. And I'm also getting a larger grading bucket for the road crew if they need to use it. And then a grapple, a grapple thumb with it as well. So that's why that was 55 grand. Again, that's also available to lease if we, if we wanted to lease it or, or rent it from a, from a contractor. Uh, one pickup truck for those folks. Uh, there's a, they're driving an old one currently. Some of the operational changes. Um, that RO plant now is, is 12, almost 12 years old, I think, 11, 12 years old. Uh, we've been doing a lot more uh, maintenance on there. And one of the things we really want to do is, is a quarterly PM for the large motors that are in there. Uh, currently, we don't have a PM service set up for, for those. Uh, and some of the other... Uh, pumps and, uh, and equipment inside the plant. So that's why that was a, that's a rather large number, 120 grand. Um, but I think that's needed. Um, then just for the parts and pieces for our own folks, um, another 10 grand for, uh, for that. Professional services, um, asking for $30,000. This could be a case by case basis. Uh, and maybe go in front of the board when we do this, but studies for new water uh, or new water studies throughout the county if we want to hey let's let's look at expanding the water system on this side of 17 or, or whatever uh, but I was looking at thirty thousand uh, dollars next year to do professional services again uh, four thousand dollars in utilities increased costs which is mainly electric for our RO plant uh, electric services are going to go up uh, our certified plane operator uh, we have a contract with twofold engineering uh, when Sam Willis is in there, I'm expecting that cost to go up as well for those folks to tune about $2,000. And then we also do the Port Buena Vista and Gilbert Road uh, water plants. And then those are getting, getting, getting really old and the cost of uh, parts and pieces and the labor for that is going up every year. So asking an additional $10,000 over last year to, to help maintain those, those systems. And that's the 405 fund. Thank changes. you, Mr. Tronville. I do have a question before I call on Mr. Adams. Act. Um, did we ever fix that valve on the water tank that we could bypass in order to, because it's, it's in design right now, sir. Three years ago, it was on critical mass. The whole thing was going to implode and life was going to come to an end. And yeah, you don't know how bad we were going to bring trucks in and park them. Oh, and that, that, oh, that valve's been fixed. If it's the one at the bottom of the water tower? I don't know. It's been fixed. That's, that's, that's fixed. Okay. So we're not at critical mass on any valves right now that we can go in there and 
repair we can oh, bypass them no not not we can't bypass it that and that one's in design right now i'm uh, designing a variable frequency drives in the in the system okay. so that we can right. take that out of service good thank you mr adams that i guess it's i mean it's the same drum that i beat all the time on the subject but it seems like we spend over a million dollars more than we take in on this um again I'm, I'm not willing to move forward with much of anything in 405 funds beyond maintaining what we have today unless we get people connected or we have a plan for expansion where we're showing that everyone's committed to connecting yeah, um, yeah, I, I got it. And, yeah, I, I've, I've come to public meetings and said the same thing for a couple of years. So, so I'm all right with it. Be more than a month to me. It's been a couple of years now. Granted, he hasn't been here the whole time. Um, <clears throat> so I've been beating this drum publicly. So the same thing, you know, it's only benefits a couple thousand people out of our whole community. And I get, I get the economic positives of it if it's sustainable, but right now we're not at a sustainable situation. So I just need, as you outlined for future growth and stuff, I need somehow someone to put in front of me that this is gonna help pay down some of the debt, it's gonna help cover it because we're gonna get 150 more people at the same rate and those 150 people actually paying a little bit more than what it costs. If we can't get there, I don't know, I, I guess I have to say I'm almost a lobbyist against this. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Is that Mr. Rawls? Yeah, um, I think we're, we're, we're stuck with the pig and the poke here on, on the water and sewer plant in East Palaka. There's no doubt about it. Um, I don't have a problem with the, with the mini excavator. Um, you mentioned leasing. Can you lease to own? Have you looked into that? Were you a dollar buyout? I haven't looked at lease to own, but I just did a leasing cost through, uh, through uh, Kubota. But I, have, I could look at a lease to own. Yeah, I, I, we do that every now and then, and sometimes it's, it, it doesn't cost you much more money to lease it and then at the end you write them a check for you, you tell them how much you want to write right. the check for a thousand ten thousand whatever um you said it takes about a day and a half to read the water meters are we not using automatic enunciating water meters as far as and pulling it back into the shop no uh what we do right now we do uh, it's a remote head yeah they can just drive by and they, they can read we it we don't we don't have antennas and no wow uh, we have to drive by, and some of them, which are still some, we That's have to antiquated. physically read. Yes. That's very antiquated. What would it take to get us to where? I, I met with a contractor. It must have been probably three months ago. They came out, and I think our current our current system um, that we're installing will allow that capability. But you need some you'll need some additional antennas set up different places to to transmit it back. Yeah. Uh, have y'all met with the city of Plaque to see what they're doing? I, I have not. No. Not yet. And they, at some point they. They got they got a grant of some type to change all their meters out, um, and now they can they can catch people not catch people they know if somebody has a leak in their house they'll they'll notify them hey you know you've you've used blah 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 gallons of water and you typically only use five thousand you've ten thousand this month but they're able to look at that and know and same thing on the gas meter side um, but it saves them money because the meters were, were old and they were not spinning as fast as the water was going by and they were not able to capture the sales of the water people were able to take advantage of that well the newer system is it is remote read but it uh it, we don't we don't read it unless we drive by it uh so we only drive by it one 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 time a month so that we can read it um and it is more accurate than the old, older ones where we had to get out of the truck and read the little dial uh, and so there are still some of those left um, okay um part brendan vista and, and gilbert road how many people are on the systems very, very few in either in either case. Um, one of those we're got it, we're getting trying to get a grant to make it uh, uh, to tie it into our, our current system. Is that Port uh, Buena Vista by two hundred seven? Yeah, that's Port Buena Vista. And that's by two hundred seven A, right? Right, two hundred seven. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, because you're saying that it's, you need ten thousand uh, dollars for maintenance. Um, is this on their RO system? No, this is for. Uh, their their current water system is they don't it's not an RO system up there. Uh, what are they just filtering it? Yeah. So I, I just <clears throat> I just met with Miller Lehman. Are you familiar with those guys out of Daytona? I am not. No. And um, we did a test at the golf course of the city's reclaimed water, and they have a thing called a turbo disc. Um, I can I can get you the contact if you want. It might be worth talking to these folks. Um, they they specialize in this type of um, not just water treatment RO and. Um, 
um, filtration. They, they've got all sorts of answers for a lot of stuff. They're pretty big in the space, so it might okay, be worth yeah. taking a look at. But I, I, I knew there wasn't many houses down. That's what I was asking. It just gets to the point where, again, why are we in the business of taking care of somebody else's water system? Are oh. we, yeah, I don't, that, you know, I wasn't here, but I know there, that was ran by a, a, a contractor or the the homeowner association at one point in time when it went defunct. It had to go to somewhere, and so the county picked it up. So we are. Are we required to do that? I don't think we picked it up. I or, think it was given or to given us to by, us or something. By the state. By so the we're state. required to maintain it. Yeah. At that point, and it's not one you can give back. They, right. they hand it to you and say deal with it. But no funding. <laughs> Is that it, Mr. Rolfe? Mr. Turner, do you want to make any comment? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, turn my button on where Jay, Jacob won't holler at me. A um, couple of things. Uh, one of them is, is that the, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at this, and, and it's, we're not going to, it's not going to be an easy fix. So we're looking at the uh, sanitation, sewer, and water. It's not going to be an easy fix. I mean, there might be some things we can do to help get it closer to self-sustaining, uh, maybe pay off some of the loans where it'll free up some BPP money or some of the money we're having to book because of it or possibly even restructuring some of the loans across the board. But to just completely walk away from a, a system that the taxpayers, whether it was us or somebody previous to us, paid multi-millions of dollars on because it's not sustainable yet, it's gonna get there one day. I mean, it's just a matter of moving forward at a pace especially if we do things like uh put in another water line in a certain high use area or different things that that just make sense so i don't think we ought to walk away from this investment just yet i don't know that we could even walk away from it but we can restructure and and do some things with it and like i said y'all turn this over to me to look at a month ago you got to give me a little more time than this to come up with different options, especially when my money lady has been tied up knee deep, <laughs> nose deep in budget, which ain't very deep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nose deep in Had budget. Had to go to short joke. Yeah, I? I can't help it. <laughs> she knows I love her. It's all right. So uh, anyhow, she's been deep into the uh, into the budget in this presentation and the different things for the last several weeks. So I haven't been able to spend a lot of time with her. Uh, but we did, we have talked about it several times and I've went over and talked to Sam and I've talked to Mike and Mike and, and different ones on it. So we, are, we have started the process, but it's going to be a little while longer before we can come up with a set of recommendations or a set of, or just good information on what it is. You know, I didn't know until recently we have five loans on that East Plaque water and sewer system, five, five different ones. So, I mean, there's just, we're going to look at all the different things and the rates and what have water. Water, water and sewer. Water and sewer. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think two, maybe three of the loans are actually better place plan um, or, uh, or use, use them for a collateral on them or whatever. And so we've got, but so if we could figure out a way to free up them, then we could at least not have to spend the more better place money on it. So we're looking at it from different angles or whatever. So. We'll get to that, but I don't really, Mike, as far as this goes, I don't really have a problem with a lot of, a lot of what they included this year. Uh, they are down $992,000 from the request last year, it looks like. So uh, at least we're heading that in the right direction on this one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Turner. <laughs> Mr. Mr. One Adam, three. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Suggs, you had a comment you wanted? Uh, just a comment to follow up on the, uh, uh, the water and sewer and trying to recruit a, uh, a larger customer base. You know, hopefully we're going to get uh, some news either uh, uh, this year or next year. You know, we had that, that uh, project in East Putnam that was uh, uh, was on the deauthorization list because funding from the federal side never came through. Uh, we were successful on our trips to D.C. to get it back on the funding list. Um, so we're hoping uh, the environmental water and infrastructure plan will will bear some fruit for us and if it does that once that that project is completed we had the potential for somewhere around 1500 to 2000 additional customers which would be huge for uh, for that system so uh just food for thought just want to let you know that that's still out there and uh hopefully we'll, we'll like i said bear some fruit from that in the next couple of years or so thank you sir Ms. young did you have a comment no mr adams that yeah so in and terry 
Commissioner Turner. If growing our way out of it is the way forward, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just want to see, at some point we have to be able to document what that number is. Is it 3,000 users? I and just, I know you're I working on it. I just don't know yet. Yeah, but that, that's what I, I would have hoped was here two years ago, three years ago when this all was going, starting. Um, so understanding we're behind the ball because of the past, whatever. But that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for let's abandon it. I'm looking for where is the break even point where we start to maybe lose a tiny bit or we start to gain or break even. At some point we need to document that as our goal line. That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about when I say this, if that makes sense. I just wanna be more clear on that. Um, I am passionate about it because like I said, my whole community, my whole district, it, it sees no benefit whatsoever, not a single person from it. Um, so I have to represent those people in that way, and I have no other choice. But, but I do think if we have that break-even point, that it does make sense, and I, I trust we all that you'll get us there. Everybody in Putnam County. Yeah, I, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> well, then then 72,000 people don't have access to it, so that's even worse. So thank you, Mr. Rawls. Um, <clears throat> I don't I don't think that there, there's there, there's no chance that we abandon. Obviously. Um, building our way out is the only way um, I don't think that people are going to be in a hurry to connect to it that have existing wells and septic systems that are not paying over hundred dollars a month for water and sewer they're not going to be in a hurry to jump on that great that, that, that ride so we're gonna have to um, add more users to it but it, at the same time as time goes on these water meters that we're discussing mine it's on All right, is that better? Um, the the water meters that we're discussing. What is the what is the service life expectancy on those? The the water meters. Yes. That's probably 10, 12 years. And what is your life of your your plant right now? 10, 12 years. So that and this is the what I'm saying is if we don't have these maintenance conversations and prevent the maintenance conversations and we we are behind the eight ball at some point we just get further and further behind it and it'll just keep hitting us harder and harder. So. Um, I, I, I can't speak to how much water the city of Palatka picked up. They, they had a company come in and said, we'll change out all your water meters for you, and you're going you're gonna to get back so much money, it's going to pay for the loan that we have to give you for it. And they did that. Siemens Corporation did the same thing for the Palatka Housing Authority. So we're going to change out all your water heaters and all, all your windows and blah, blah, blah. And they, they saved them so much money, they were able to service the debt on a $2 million um, loan just on the savings that they captured. They were already spending the money every month. They redirect the money so I'm just saying that you know I know that we're getting critical with the water plant you got maintenance coming up on the water tower that's included in here obviously um, but that stuff will never go away it's we're all we're in a continuous maintenance cycle now you know until for the rest of our lives all right thank you any other comments about the 405 fund all right we're gonna move on um, before we go to sanitation I do want to say this morning um, I had a conversation with Sam Sullivan uh, Mr. Suggs and I did for department heads. Um, look at your Recovery America money that might be coming in, will be coming in this year. Put an overlay. You might find some of your projects could be covered under that. It's a stretch because at first a lot of it was we're just going to give you money and you can do what you want. But that's kind of tightened up a lot. So, um, but there might be there might be some avenues where we save 50 here, 100 there, 25 here, and it all adds up at the end of the day. So do look at those infrastructure projects and, and think, especially safety, public safety is a big one there. Um, but again, those rules, I think we're gonna get 7.2 million in August or July, and then another 7.2 next year. So, um, and then you have till 2024 to spend it. So it's going to be a little different than what we cares that money and what we did there. So, you know, but there might be opportunities to kind of, okay, now we know what the expenses are. Where do we find the revenues at to support some of the things that are being asked for today? So just, just my comment there. Uh, Jay, you've got sanitation, our enterprise fund. Yes, sir. Mr. Tilton, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you Jay. Mr. Tilton, if you'll go ahead and present, present yes, sir. yourself. I appreciate y'all have give me the opportunity to stand here or sit here in front of you today. Um, as far as what we've done in full year 21, um, we were able to reduce fees last year uh, to tune about $41. And then we are expected to have cell 4A construction will be done as of right now, middle of September, we should be done with that. 
Our average uh, per month revenue and solid waste revenues is up to about 330,000. That's up from about 80 to 80, 80 to 85,000 when I first got here. So we've more than um, lapped it over a couple of times. And we're averaging about 650 tons a day of MSW. That's on a six day week. Um, as far as some other initiatives we've been working on, is the opportunity to recycle glass again. We finally got our glass bunker built. However, we're trying to finish up. We got to put a part of the permit. Um, that area has to have a, a dirt buttress around it. So we're putting a lime rock buttress around it so we can hold it into place. Because part of it's for tires and then the other parts will be for glass. And then we should be able to hold the 25 tons required by our contractor um, uh, that was required by our contractor because that's what he wants is a load. He wants to be able to send a truck, get a load, and then we'll ship it down to Sarasota. Um, we're also in the process of uh, getting a tire processing permit. Um, our, our ability to get rid of tires is non-existent really and truthfully right now. We went back out to bid. Our tire contractor global that we had for the, since I'd been here, they cut us off. Um, and then we went back out for bid and had nobody bid on it. So right now we're actually using a, uh, we, we kind of went down the list of DEP tire processing people and we found one. Um, but it's, it, it's a lot more expensive than what we've been paying. But in order to stay in compliance, we got to try to move them the best we can. So we're paying as much as $13 for a semi-truck tire to get rid of it right now. Wow. So with that being said, and we're at their mercy. Um, their mercy, they could say, you know what? Your tires have too much dirt in them or we don't like rims. Um, and so you're cut off and we have to be in this battle. So what I've done is um, working with Jones Edmonds, we've put in the application to become a tire processor. And if we do that, then to be able to get a grinder, which is in, in the uh, capital request next year, that will allow us to grind them and mulch them up and put them in the landfill or strive to use them for, you know, it depends on the grinder if we can get them. DEP, I don't know if we could get them there to be able to approve it for us to use it as cover, but that's a conversation I'm going to have. Um, but uh, by law, we're allowed to cut them in eighths and then we can put them in the landfill just as normal garbage. And so that's something that we're, we're going down to. But when we get to the capital line items, the purchase of that grinder is solely dependent on whether DEP will give us a tire processing permit. Um, as well as we're in the process. Hey, would, would, are you going to be able to take tires in from out of county if it worked that and charge the, the same type of fees you're have. paid right now? That's a conversation that we, should, we will have. Yes, yeah, sure. sir. Thank because, you. I mean, if we can, Water I don't to know bring what, that up. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> that was, the, that was a question I just wrote. So well, I will tell you this, that, that like our glass contractor, they want us to be able to take glass from other places, but i got to make sure we can handle our glass first. You know what I mean? So And make sure this works because this is all new. Um, we also have applied for an on-site bar pit. Um, we kind of had to go back and forth on who actually permits our bar pit first. I bounced back and forth from um, water management district to local DEP to state DEP and wound up at uh, local, local DEP. They're out of Jackson. Nope, no sir. Uh, historically, when, in my experience in the landfill business is uh, bar pits are part of your operational permit because you've got to be able to cover. Yeah. That's not that way here. It actually is a separate permit that you have to do in order to do that. And so what we've done is, is there's, a, there's an exempt status because it was just quicker. Um, as you, you call out a five acre, something smaller than five acres, and we've, we've cut out uh, 4.7 acres. You submit it, it's a 30 day uh, note. They review it, make sure the area makes sense, make sure that you're so far away from uh, wetlands, using the GIS wetlands from the uh, wetlands uh, list, you know, uh, from the, the federal wetlands list, and then they give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you got to go back to it. As we go forward and we look at our um, future plan, our next permit uh, renewal here in coming years, we're going to permit a big uh, bar pit that will allow us to use that and save money on future cell construction and things like that. This one right here is mostly for us just to be able to cover with um, as we need cover. Um, staffing changes. One of the things and, and kind of one of the, the big items that I have is our phase one mining. And that is where we're going to start getting ready to build the next cell five years down the road. And so we have to mine out as part of our master plan, we have to mine out 4B. And so in order to do that, that's why I'm requesting two new operators, uh, landfill operator number ones. And then one of my guys, because of kind of our um, change in the way that my business or my department set up, I'm wanting to bump one of my guys up and make a landfill operator two position as we give him more um, responsibilities on the hill when it, as far as setting up a work face and making sure our compaction is where it needs to be to be able to extend the life of our landfill as long as possible. Um, 
capital request, we got $50,000 in pole barn improvements, and that's our whole pole barn area, um, which we have, we have two different pole barns there. Um, and we've got concrete breaking, and we've got, uh, we have to build a new area to house um, propane tanks, because right now they're just sitting under the shed. And, and, and things like that, tins being tore down, uh, falling apart, and just things like that, um, and upgrade on the facilities there for uh, the offices and everything there. So it's just some upgrades that would need to happen <coughs> there at that facility. Um, when you build more landfill, you gotta have more storage for leachate. So um, I'm proposing this $500,000 should get us a 100,000 gallon tank, and that will last us for probably the life of um, at least for the next 10 to 15 years it should last us if we continue to build sales at, at a five, uh, every five years. Um, and then part of the other th issues that we have is a lot of our equipment out there for our leachate is antiquated. And what I mean by that is right now, we, you should be able to run these machines on auto and they're not. We run them by hand. You go there, my guy gets there at 6.30 in the morning before the landfill opens, he turns it on, looks down in the hole, makes sure it's empty, turns it off. Runs around to the other side, turns it on, makes sure it's empty, turns it off. Float switches don't work? No, they don't. They have it since I've got there. Cost. So what we got that, but the other thing you got to do when you have a, a, a tank farm is you got to make sure that you have an ability, if it gets so full, that it shuts off right. your pumps out in the field to where you can't overflow, overflow into a secondary containment. So those are the repairs and everything that we have to do. And depending on how elaborate we want to get with that as far as ability to monitor. And so we're supposed to be able to track the amount of gallons that's coming from the different parts of your landfill. So that's what that $200,000 is in there for to upgrade. And that's been there for a while. I had it in there this year. It's actually a rollover from this year. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I didn't do it is because of the changes with the new cell construction, the south end pumps. I didn't see no in to invest in the south end pumps with them coming out and us building new ones. So basically it should save us a little bit of money by only having to work on uh, tying in the new ones on the east side and the north side and then making it all work in the loop so we can track it. Um, and then y'all, if you've been out in the landfill, you can see what my office buildings, the two little um, uh, single whites look like. My office is falling in a hole. That could be because I'm sitting in there or not is what I was asked the other day because I'm a big old boy. But uh, um, I think it was that way before I got here personally, but I'm just saying that. So uh, we need a new office building and I've been tasked to make that place look better and that's where we're going to need to start is a new office building. So I do have that in there for next year as well as the whole of the floors falling through in my scale house. So I have a new portable building for it as well out there. Um, our tanker truck, our tanker truck has holes all in it. If we're just gonna use it for uh, watering and dusting <laughs> the roads, then that's fine. If we're, gonna ha if we're going to haul leachate somewhere because our contractor can't, we will not be able to go out on the road with it. And it's been in there to be replaced in our five year, you, know, you put five year capital, that's been in there for a while. Um, so if, 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 just know that if we don't replace that, and, and it's fine, we can still knock the dust down at the landfill, but we're going to have to rent something that we have to haul leachate off site. Just, just know that. Um, and then our, my pickup trucks, they're just, they're, they're, they're old. It's the mosquito control truck, which half of the year she does landfill stuff like inspections and checking my, um, off sites. And then we have our recycling truck, which we have the tailgate and everything on for hauling the household hazardous waste from the off-sites, one, uh, one of my inmate crew trucks, and then one of the trucks there at the landfill. And all these trucks are 10 plus years old. Um, and then we have roll-off containers. We, we, we gotta start moving some of these around. I've actually got um, working with a local contractor. We're checking the ones out that have the railings and everything gone to where we can, um, if they cost too much to repair them, then it's time to replace them because we run about 24 dumpsters. You need eight for each site, and then we have the ones there at the landfill that we, we move around. Um, and the vibratory screen that we have, that's part of the mining project because we actually have to dig that garbage up and get the dirt out of it. And then our, our expansion at Huntington this year, I'm gonna get done a new office building out there, or guard shack out there in Alarkin. I wanna do the same at, at uh, attendant building. Attendant building out there at Interlarkin. I would like to redo the attendant building out at Huntington there in the Crescent City area, um, as well as as we have some um, improvements in drainage that we have to do out there on site. Um, we've got a spot in the back that continues to blow out. It's an old berm, as well as the fence from our, our prior DEP inspection. 
that has to be repaired. So we have, and as well as a culvert in our drainage there on the backside that's crushed in. So we just got some improvements and things that we have to make, as well as interlarking is the same type deal, just some improvements on drainage and the way the dumpsters and everything are set up. We have to make out there interlarking um, to continue to improve those areas. And then we have the, the tire grinder. Like I said, um, commissioners, that is solely dependent upon whether we can get a, um, get a permit from DP. And now I did, I have had one gentleman come by um, and give me a price on an electric one, um, one that they put in in Amarillo, Texas, um, and it, it works pretty slick. Um, and it was in that 350, by the time you do the conveyor belts, the 380 range, depending on how elaborate we want to get. But that just does two inch by eight inch strips is how it comes out. So if we're gonna have to get something smaller to be able to use it for alternative daily cover, that's why I added a little bit in there so we can kind of give ourselves options on what kind of uh, chips we want coming out on the backside. Um, the, the biggest capital I have is the phase one mining. That's historically the number that we've put in there. I've been in contact with the, um, the me of Escambia County where they've done these things. I'm thinking we can get it done for way less than that. But historically, that's been the number that we've put in there. So as I get, you know, as we get a little bit further through there, I should be able to come back with a better number of that with what we're going to see. I don't know if we're going to need a second screen, you know what I mean? As we look, you got the first one to get the initial garbage out. Then you got a smaller one so that you can get the other garbage out. So that's what I got to figure out that could offset that or, or uh, expand that, depending on what we got going on. Um, as far as operational costs, fuel's going up. Um, so I've got $35,000 in there for extra fuel costs as well as since we're running our equipment more um, undercarriages and everything are starting to wear out faster and I'm, I'm looking at some initiatives and things like that, that we can do different some uh, series one undercarriages that they're getting 50% uh, more hours out of that I want to try uh, in the garbage and see if we can do the same and that could be a good savings for us as well. So that's what we got going on at sanitation. Mr. Chair. Mr. Yeah, we already figured yeah. <laughs> we we figured that one out, <coughs> Mr. Adams. <laughs> Send him a fire truck instead of a water truck. <laughs> so, with all this, what does that make the fee look like compared to this year? Does that leave us room? Does it go down? Does it stay the same? Is what were you? We I haven't got that far into okay. it this year. And then, I mean, if we look at all you guys' faces, you're the one that's the most chipper. I mean, you're not operating a cost center. You actually have, have the opportunity to bring in funds. I mean, so, right. no, and that means a lot. I, I worked in a business in, in EMC and Dell for the first 20 years of my career, well, actually 18 years, where I was in a cost center. So our, everything we did, like the, most of the agencies here, was a cost to the company or a cost to the county in this case, where you have the opportunity actually to bring in something where we can save the taxpayers money and then save other departments money potentially. Um, so that's an exciting thing for you and it, 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 it does show in your energy level and I appreciate that. Yes, and uh, just and I, I'm saying this because I appreciate the fact of all the other directors that I do understand that we're in a cost center. It isn't a money making thing. You're trying to do what's best for the citizens with the resources we have and uh, I appreciate what everyone's doing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and, and just to that point, I guess we need to remember that um, as an organization, we got to look at the long term and the things that we need to improve upon now, you know what I mean? And then as we go forward long term as a strategic plan, give as much back to the citizens as we can. But there's things, the sins of our fathers and just things that have been left out and antiquated that if we can replace what we need to look at doing it at times. But at the, the end goal is to make it to where the citizens of Putnam County don't pay nothing for their garbage to be picked up. So when we make the movie about Putnam County, we'll call it Sins of Our Fathers. <laughs> Sometimes that's that's well, there ain't no come out answer, of this going good. Yep, I appreciate it, Mr. Turner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As he said, that is the end goal: is try to get it where it's profit center enough to where the citizens of Putnam County actually don't have to pay to deal with their own garbage. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, we made a big step towards that goal in the last couple of years. A real big step. Um, several more than one. Um, Jay, I'd, I'd like to challenge you to do a couple of things. I'd like to challenge you to look at the, at the uh, $500,000 leachate tank and maybe do an inline smaller tank to where as we got bigger, we could just add another tank beside of it. It should be a savings amount. Then, then we don't have to put in a tank system that lasts 15 years at this time. We could put in one that lasts 
that will cover us the next five years that could be uh, added on to if it's not a lot of difference in money. Um, the, uh, the, I'd like to really take a close look at the leachate engineering services here and see what we need. Well, if we got to have it, we got to have it. That's all there is. But I want to be real frugal with it also if we could. Um, also, the, uh, phase, the uh, phase one mining, um, this fund runs completely different, as Commissioner Adams Act said, than the others. So, you know, I would like to see what you think it's going to really cost to do this. And then uh, if we need another screen later on, we don't need to hide it in the slush fund and call it mining. We can always come back and just ask for an, a second one if, we, if it need be or, or whatever. I think you'd find on sanitation that it's a lot easier to get that because you're paying your own way. And so... Uh, I think that we could do that, and the uh, is the fleet the hundred thousand you're asking for fleet maintenance is that in addition to uh, what you're using now? So that's a yes, hundred thousand on top of what you're doing existing. Yes, sir. Okay. So what, aren't you fixing to get a new bulldozer, and we I, just bought you a new compactor and a, well, and that, a loader and a front end and a dump truck and a and a yeah. I can go on, buddy. I sure, mean, sure. But you got to remember. You know, when you're running those things 2,000 hours a year and you get a, you get 1,000 hours, you have to do a turn. That's mm -hmm. 10 grand. And then at 2,000 hours, you have to do a full undercarriage, and that's right at 35 grand. Well, I want that's you to maintain D them even yeah, better no, that's, than that's they a, say. And that's a D6. Yeah. And, y'all, I'm fixing to bring a D8 um, in front of you guys because we need that. We're killing these D6s. The ones that we have as D6s, those are dirt machines. they got a six-way blade on them. They're not for pushing garbage. That D8, the undercarriage on that D8 is going to be fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and that's you know a year. So I mean that's why as we go forward, I want to be able to cover those costs. That's the purpose. Of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think it's Mr. Rawls is next. So you and I discussed um, rubber mulching quite a while ago, and. I'm, I'm in the process of trying to buy rubber mulch right now for my, myself. There's not many people that are doing that. There's a large guy in Miami that can ship it up. Um, and I know that you can use it for ADF, obviously. Is there any chance that we could take a look at producing rubber mulch? I, I think we can look at doing any of that. The, the, you have to have an end, end market for it. Right. And that's the, and that was, so just so you know, but Global the, the Recycling and Wildwood. Is they, they have on their website, they're looking for suppliers. Okay. Okay. I, I'd get there. If you want to give me their number, yeah. I'll call they them. They claim to be the largest in the southeastern part of America, and but yeah. they're looking so, for people to sell them so, raw material. So just FYI, that's supposedly what Global Tire Processing and Wildwood does, is they make crumb rubber. And yeah, I've bought from them before. Yep. I bought a dump truck they, they turned us down, or they told us that our stuff was too dirty. That we get, you know, we get a lot of stuff out of the woods and different things like that, and they 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 cut us off, and we had a contract you're, with them. You're, I'm talking about if we're processing the no, tires okay. and the mulch. Yeah, no, I'm with you. We can sell the end product. I'm with you. So, but it might be for us to get an end product that's to a level of what a customer might want. Yeah. We might have to do a couple extra things. I guess is what I'm saying, Commissioner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a wash plan or something like that to run it through before we run it through the grinder. Yeah, and then we we can also make money on selling the metal. And sure. Scrap that. Um, on-site leachate processing versus hauling. On-site, so we'd have to do a study what it would cost to do, um, to do to put in a wastewater treatment plant. I will tell you something that I want to go forward with, um, which we we don't trigger to have to put a gas plant in for probably until we go into cell 4V. But um, I want to do a leachate evaporator here. Okay. And I will tell you that up there in South Carolina, I was paying almost eight cents, and I took it down to three cents. That's if you use your own gas. If right. you've got to buy natural gas, then it was up there at least, it was nine to 10 cents. So it didn't make sense for me to do it until I was able to use, it wouldn't make sense for us to do it because we're paying 8.9 cents now until we have our own gas and can facilitate that. So you can take the methane and-, and You take the methane and it's basically, if you had, basically the way it works is you have this uh, steam stack yep. and you know how you blow into your milk and make milk bubbles? 
you run air down in there, and then you got a heat torch on top of Jay, it. Okay, we quit doing it. that in kindergarten. That, so, that, that's a, yeah, but you never forget. So <laughs> it blows 6,000 CFM of air in there, and it's churning that leachate, and then you stake that, that flame stack over top of it, and it heats it to about 189 degrees, and then it shoots the steam out the top. And it turn it takes it out ten to one. So then you got a brine, which is like a thick coffee right. that we get rid of, that we take and put back in the in the landfill. But it's it, it's something to behold. And, and <laughs> what would that save us on an annual basis at that point? If you're so if we were to take it down, say to three cents from eight, we're spending we're spending probably roughly six hundred thousand dollars a year. Is eight really a good number with cost of in, uh, increase in fuel costs? Right now it is. Last year it was nine and a half. Yeah, he we got, he we got it down to eight, so. eight nine with a different yeah. contractor or an old contractor. So, um, you know, I, I would say it'd probably save us three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, yeah. let's say half. You know, and because there's going to be some infrastructure that must, we had them build up there in South Carolina, the biggest one they had ever built. It would do forty thousand gallons of leachate a day, and we ran it twenty four hours a day. We probably need a 20, half that size, and that one was three point three million. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the initial one will probably cost us a million and a half to two, depending on inflation, because that was four years ago, five years ago. So, but, but it pays for itself pretty quick. I, I, I just think that's something we should also be looking into, because, you know, getting to your ultimate goal of getting the, yes, the landfill totally sustainable, where we save so much money that um, the, the consumer is not having to pay anything to maintain that on a daily basis. It's you heading in that direction. You said three hundred thirty thousand dollars a week. What is your annual cost no, to operate? I'm not per, per, um, What is your annual cost to operate? I think so. We're. Can you tell me we're about nine hundred thousand? Yeah. Uh, we're about nine hundred thousand uh, in the black above, kind of like our just our bare operating costs, not including the capital stuff. I think is what she told me. It was eight point three. Okay. And you're bringing in about a third of that, mm -hmm. a little over a third. Mm -hmm. okay. You got to think though, three point something million of that is uh, waste pro picking up the garbage. Right, right, right. Um, so you're fixing to mine another cell. Yes, sir. Because why? Because our master plan has us digging up the old landfill. Uh, I believe the original reason for doing that, that was done before I got here, was to stop contamination because we do have some contamination off the site. And then we line it and then put it back in. So we'll take 4 at B, put it in 4A, and then we go up. And that's I, the I master thought, plan. I, I thought the, uh, the contamination was not a health hazard to humans, that there was an option for us to not mine and to be able to either build containment walls and flood it. and let the, We're talking about um, uh, benzene, correct? Mm -hmm. Where did you hear that, Commissioner? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard that, Commissioner. Where did you hear that at? I, that got by me somehow. This was I understand back when they that. had the... Um, what was that? The Debbie Griffin was, she was sitting right oh, there, as a matter committed. of fact, and in I'm a sorry. casual conversation, I could Ted, take you, the whole we thing. We didn't I, have I to repair the, the old liners? Is that no, what no, you No, no, well, That's what he just said. Yeah, no, we, we didn't have, have to mine. mine. We didn't have to mine. So we didn't there's have, things you can do to slow down other ways of getting rid, rid of yeah. the right. contamination. You put an air curtain, if it's methane, you put an air curtain in, the oxygen blocks the methane from getting out, and there's other things. But what we found out, the reason we mined it was we needed the airspace and we needed to clean up, so we've killed two birds with one. Yes, sir. So th that's my question. Do we need to mine? So if, the, we need, if the answer is we need the airspace to be to able to, to go up higher, if you, I got if, it. If you're not going to mine, then we're gonna have, what we're going to look at is, because we're going to go on the other side of the power line, Open we're up going to get it cell. permitted to do like a greenfield site, you know what I mean, and, and start there. So, I mean, it's just another process. It's not a, it's, it's not no, a no, but, it's just another process. My, my, my problem is, is, you know, I was here back when we had $130 a year bills for solid waste disposal we weren't mining and then all of a sudden somebody had the bright idea of mining and it, it brings us to where we are with this three hundred dollar um a, a year actually more than that back then um oh, solid waste disposal fee so You'll help me if, if, mm -hmm. if, if there's an option to not mine i would you know like to at least export at some point i don't i don't know if there's a you know because you, you're, you're you're running one maybe two screens which by the way they sell them reconditioned really cheap all the time okay. um and then versus opening up a new cell, a virgin property, and not gaining the airspace over here, but we have the airspace over here because that gets fully lined. Yes, sir. All right. Um, uh, I think that's it. Mr. Adams, that, and then I'll go to Mr. <coughs> I guess I would be remiss because 
I mean, part of the reason why I brought up the scales in Crescent City and Interlochen, which I don't see in here, is kind of like Commissioner Chairman Harvey had said during that meeting. You know, I, I think that does go a long ways. I, and you said it the best, Chairman, is when a guy comes to the dump with a full loaded truck and he decides he doesn't want to pay the fee, he's not going home with that stuff on his truck. And we're seeing that more and more out in West Putnam, couches and just different things laid out on the road. And I think having scales in interlocking is the one I'm primarily looking for, but in interlocking in Crescent City helps alleviate some of that. It kills two birds with one stone. It gives the, the citizens more options for getting their garbage amount that they're allowed to use per year that live in proximity to those two locations, the opportunity to. And I believe it, I actually do believe, as Chairman Harvey referred to that day, that it would alleviate some of our dumping in our areas. And that's the number one complaint I get is dumping since I've been a commissioner. So that's, I get at least three calls a day in emails. So um, I just think that, that we need to look at putting that in here. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Turner. Uh, do you want to go next, Mr. Chairman? You want me to go You next? can go ahead. Okay. And I'll follow you up. All right. Well, the next, the only thing I want to bring to our attention is that you kind of blew over it real quick, but it's a little more, it's a little bigger thing than you made out at the bees are, is our glass bunker. You know, we went from dumping glass in the landfill to building a bunker. Jafe went out and found the end product somewhere for it. And it ain't much, but it's a few bucks. So we don't burn up our airspace. Right. At some point, if this deal works out, he's going to be able to take glass in from other areas who will probably pay full boat or close to it just to get the glass out of there wherever they're going because it's heavy and weighs a lot and they'll bring it over here and then we can ship it out of here on truckloads by putting it in the deal. So that's a little kudos from Mr. Tilton while this was going on. He took the problem and it took a little time because we had to build a bunker, figure out a system, build a bunker and get it done and that's where we are. And I feel confident at some point he'll do the same with the tires. I don't know where it'll go, but or what he's going to do with it, but he'll figure it out. And, you know, that's, I have a lot of confidence in him and he'll figure it out. And we'll get an end product because if you don't have an end product, you got to just deal with them by dumping them in the landfill. You don't have another option. So, you know, if we can find somewhere for them to go, wonderful. Um, I'd just like for you to run the landfill as frugally as possible. You know that. Yes, so, sir. Uh, but other than that, I think you're doing a fine job. Thank you. And I want to follow up on something. When I first got here, it, you know, it was trial by fire and the landfill was up for sale. So I traveled around Florida to learn landfills. And I was just as naive to go, well, we're digging up the landfill because we had this contamination. That's not why you're digging up the landfill. And I traveled from this landfill to that landfill to University of Florida to Hinckley Center of Solid Waste Management and said the same thing, I'm here because we had this contamination and that's not why you're here. And tell me why I'm here. And I said, they said to me, you're here because you're trying to, you need to create airspace. That's what you're trying to do. And the compaction rate wasn't good. Yes, you can clean up your, your contamination Okay, but there's, once you open that up, there's gonna be a little flush there and you're gonna see some levels get higher. I'm really glad that I listened to them. I'm glad Commissioner Turner came along too. Um, government's difficult to understand sometimes, but money isn't hard to understand and how you make money. And selling the landfill at that time and trying to move that money to the coffers of the general fund wasn't gonna happen the way they thought it was gonna happen. You had to prove that you had that, that money in there to begin with, somewhat. So this is a, an opportunity that we saw to keep this landfill. I think it's worth billions of dollars. I don't think it was worth millions. I think it's worth the billion. I think the land we have out there, if we can compact all what we've got together and then look at adding more cells, I think we've got a, a big future ahead of us. You and I have had this talk. I believe that you're putting garbage in a plastic bag and you're covering it up with dirt. And one day somebody's gonna mine that plastic bag of garbage out and make other renewable products with that. I, I see that happening. But I also see that it's, we're saving our citizens money right now. Selling the landfill was not going to be the answer to that because it wasn't a good deal for Putnam County. So I appreciate you coming along. I appreciate Commissioner Turner I appreciate our board at that time taking a stance of not selling it. 
because we've had the future vision of what landfills really are to Florida. And you have a lot of moving parts out there. We all get that. But um, it looks like you manage it, and it looks like you're very passionate and very knowledgeable about what you do, and I appreciate that very, very much, okay? So I don't want to make light of that. Commissioner Pickens? Yeah, along those lines, um, my conversation with Jay, when I've had people tell me, um, why don't we have a good recycling program? We should make money on it. So Jay educated me real quick. He said, if you don't have an end user, then it's no good. So I appreciate you um, looking at the tires and also, because the tires are going to continue to be a problem, and the glass also, so it looks like that's taking place. Will you take in all color glass? Doesn't matter if it's brown, green, whatever. No, sure. Okay. The way we got it set now, and I'm and I'm look I'm always looking for a, a, a better a better way to handle this. You know, I, I'd like to look at Waste Pro doing single stream, and they just take it all and you put it all in one thing and they ship it over to their big Murph in Ocala. Yeah. Then it's all done curbside, and we don't have to mess with it there at the landfill. You see what I'm saying? I mean, there's we need to look at all options, but right now this is the option that we have. And this is one that can work. And like Commissioner Turner said, we can make a little bit of money. It's not a lot, but it's a little bit. That's right. It's a lot. Okay. Mr. Okay. Adams, that. Yeah, and I think beyond that, like Turner, Commissioner Turner said, it's not just the money you make on the glass. It's the space you save in the landfill. Mm -hmm. That's worth more than the money, probably. Um, from the glass perspective, though, at what point does Waste Pro start taking glass in our recycle containers? Is that so? They got to have they got to have an end user for it. Um, I don't know what they do with it now. You know, it's, they, they don't take it at all now. But right. I do understand that their, their facility in Ocala takes it, and they do something with it. I don't know, they might load it back up and take it back in a landfill. To a oh, landfill I got you. Somewhere. So their recyclables never come to your landfill. So the only means to get glass there is us to bring it to you. Mm -hmm. Or to our drop-off facilities. We have gas containers at Huntington and, and, okay. uh, and in Alarkin. But the I if I may, but the idea here is, is that to get this to be a money-making proposition, right. the glass thing. Now, the end user's got to remain stronger, get stronger. There's got to be a lot of things fit into place, but at least we're not dumping glass in the landfill yeah. anymore, wasting airspace and costing money. Well, so I mean, we are, unless someone that chooses direction. to bring it to the facility. Um, so, I mean, the good news is in, in the current national political climate, I think this particular sector is going to grow. So keep that in mind. Any recycling thing that we're doing right now it may have, just like Larry, Commission Chairman Harvey was saying, um, you know, there may be opportunities for grants and stuff along those lines as well. So I mean, keep that coming because I think they are still talking about 2.8 trillion for infrastructure, and some of that is recycling and things like that. Yeah. Mr. Rawls. So <clears throat> I guess I'm, I'm I'm confused. You you said they're doing the big Murph down on Cal instead of the dirty Murph. Um, how are they getting the materials down there? They that, they don't get our materials. Okay. That's what I'm saying. But to me, it would make sense one of these days, maybe when we rene renegotiate their, con their contract or whatever, to get them to go to single stream, then you don't have their guys standing on the side of the road sitting there trying to sort stuff out of that basket. Right. They throw it in the end of a rear load, and then they can just come dump it out on the floor there, load it in the semi, and just take it over there, let them sort it. You see what I'm saying? We don't, we don't do that now, but I mean. But that would be all recyclables? Mm-hmm. How would, we, how would we get the glass? You put it in the bin. But how, if, if they're taking it, how would we? We won't then. We would, we would, we would check out of that for our citizens. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, there's, okay. all, there's always options because kind of to Commissioner Adams' Act's proposition, if they don't want to bring it to me right now at Inalarkin, Huntington, or Central, they're throwing it in the garbage. Right. So that's, as we try to work towards our goal, you know, we don't have to meet that, I think it was 50% or 70% goal of the state. Um, was to be uh, recycling. We, we're not because we're under 100,000 people. We don't have to meet that, but we want to do the best we can to recycle. If somebody was to come in with one of those, you know, uh, burner facilities or something like that, and want to jump on that board, I, hey man, I'm in. Let's try it out. You know, so I'm. I'm you know, the plasma arc gas. Any of that stuff. If we can make money for this county, this is home, guys. I mean, yeah. excuse me, commissioners. <clears throat> no, that's so right. if we can do it, if we can make money off of it, I'm down. I, I guess. And I held that torch at University of Florida. They're using it, but it's not. It's a very small scale. They have a much bigger one out in the panhandle, at the Air Force Base up there. But um, it, that that technology is still not proven yet. But it's getting. It may get there, it's, but it's, it ain't yeah, yet. Yeah. Um, I you know part part of the conversation is sustainability going forward. Yes, sir. That's that's probably the single largest portion of it. And part of the sustainability is 
taking the burden off the taxpayers, you know, like you said, for the sins of others in the past. Um, is there a point that you see in the next five to 10 years where we actually do get down to where we're less than $150 a year, we're only paying for the trash collection? And I would tell you a lot of that's gonna be driven by the market in our area. Because we don't want to be, we you know, we don't want to be doing this just to break even. Right. In order to be able to give money back to the taxpayers, we got to figure out what our rates need to be as some of the big contracts come out, Clay County, St. Johns County. If we're going to look at those. We got to make sure that we have a competitive rate that the market will allow us to compete there. Right. But we got to make sure it's going to make enough money for us to have something left over to give back to the citizens. Right. So the market's going to dictate a lot of that, Commissioner. Yeah, don't worry. But we have to do our due diligence to make sure that we understand what that number needs to be going forward, and that's going to be a priority of mine going forward to understand that number and make sure that we are competitive when those things come to fruition. So if if um, paper products, plastic products became in vogue, you would not have a problem doing any kind of MRF, whether it's a dirty MRF or the Here? big MRF? Yeah. If it made sense. I mean, I would think if it made sense and it was a money maker, I don't know why we wouldn't look at it at least. Okay. All right, because it, it just, I, I get the feeling, listening to some of the stuff coming to Washington lately, that we're heading down that path. Depending on, <clears throat> depending on who's in the White House will yeah. depend on, I've been in this business long enough, will depend on what the conversation is. Yeah. When I was up there during um, President Obama's tenure, I was meeting with people that were wanting to pump gas onto Fort Jackson to power deuce and a half from my landfill. That's, wow. that's what the conversations I was having. As soon as that administration checked out, those conversations went away, you know. So it just depends on who's pushing it and where the money's coming from. All right, good. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. sure, sure. All right. The last page is kind of an overview. And I think we've, we're okay. Ms. 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 Young, are you wanting to go highlight anything? I mean, well, that's what the board desires. I think it's obvious she ran out of black ink. Yeah, well. I think. <laughs> Yeah, you could change the red to black and we'd all be good. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right. So, so if we're, Mr. Turner, go right ahead. Okay. I, you know, we can talk about this as long as we want to, but we're back where we started first I, thing this morning. I, we're $13.986,354 in the red. And at this point, you've heard the, yeah. you've heard the wishes of the board. We wish we could buy it all. Everything that everybody asked for today, we wish we could buy. Um, so I think at this point, Mr. Chairman, I'd like for you to read those okay. five or six things that you came up with this, that you said this morning when we started. Um, and, uh, and I think we just need to make a motion to send this back to staff to get it closer to end budget than where, I mean, to a balanced budget than what it is right now. Okay. So what I wrote down was at the end of our conversation today or whenever we finish this up, the BOCC needs to collectively, by majority, vote or direct the staff to the goal of what we want to do for this budget, si budget, si budget cycle. Cap reserves at a percentage of the general fund that we feel like we need to live with. Do we want to lower the millage rate for our citizens? Do we want to reduce solid waste fee? Yes. Or let me just say, um, and also, do we want to balance our budget without using reserves? And I think those are the that things. Be my goal and my motion is is, we, is what you just said. Okay. That we strive to do that. We have a proper motion on the floor for the four things that were talked about just now. Do we have a second? I'll second it. A proper discussion. second by Commissioner Pickens. Is there any further discussion on the motion on the floor? Mr. Rawls. So, <clears throat> it's, I, I think we're being foolish if we try to act this quickly um, based on everything that we heard today. And, um, you know, we've, we're, at, we're, at a, we're at a juncture as a commission and as a county that if we don't start making corrective actions um, and taking a proactive stance, um, things aren't going to just start breaking. They're going to start failing. And we're talking about the kind of things that could cost, cost um, our taxpayers um, their livelihood, their lives. Um, you know, if we start having road issues like or, or bridge issues. What are you wanting to do that we're not doing, uh, Commissioner? Well, That's if, what I don't understand. So well, if, 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 we, if we ask our staff what they need, not what they want, what they need to make it through the next year, and we, we look at them and say, I'm sorry, go back and start from scratch but 
zero out zero out the uh, the request because we're not going to come up with any new funding. I, th I think we're, we I, I think not only are, are we ignoring our, fi our, our fiduciary responsibility, um, I, th I think we're being, being very dangerous with the public's uh, well-being. You know, there, there was email after email after email sent out regarding the Barden Bridge, and this thing went ignored for five years, and somebody stuck their head in the sand. And I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but I'm just saying that somebody in this government knew that bridge was failing. They knew Thursday morning when they were told at that bridge that it was being shut down, that never got conveyed. It just... Things get ignored. We cannot ignore this kind of this stuff anymore. We budgeted a million dollars last year for our bridge improvements, for our guardrails, for our ditch maintenance and, our, uh, and, and, and mowing, and, and that's not enough money. And, and we hear com uh, consistently from taxpayers about trash on the sides of the road. We're not mowing. We're not cleaning the ditches. Our culverts are, over, are, are clogged. I got a picture sent the other day, and I said, Mr. Troxell. Guy sends a picture of the insection of his culvert. He is not happy. He says, you guys haven't maintained this in a long time. I said, is, is this ours to maintain? But if we don't start making adjustments now, and I'm not saying that we have to spend $14 million, but the other part of the conversation is not everybody participates at the same level in the government that we supply to our citizens. And I think that's um, an oversight or a miss on the part of us or other commissions where we have an opportunity <clears throat> to have a, a, uh, a more fair taxing system. And, you know, we can't do anything with ad valorem taxation. Our ad valorem rates are almost as high as they can go anyway. So we've got to start looking at something that's an alternative to that. Um, I don't think myself as a, as a consumer, as a taxpayer, I wouldn't have a problem paying more in fees if I could see a reduction in my ad valorem taxes. Um, I just don't want to be the only person paying $6,000 a year in ad valorem taxes when I just built myself a new home or anybody else that's moving to Putnam County. I don't think it's, it's not right that, so, so that some people can live here and pay almost nothing and other people can live here and pay um, for the rest of it. You know, this is the honk if I pay your taxes conversation. So, um, and then the fire service, or, you know, if, if, if we don't fund the fire, if we don't fund any more money to the fire service, JR, and this is a question to you, where does that leave us? And what does that what does that do to our our, um, our fire protection for the county? I can hear you fine. Okay. Well, they can't pick you Stand up. Stand up at that one. Yes. <coughs> we bend over. <laughs> Would you? I'm sorry. The green light wasn't on. I swear. Uh, can you can you please reask your question? If, 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 we, if we didn't if we didn't if we if we left your line item the same as it was last year or your, your your budget the same as it was last year, for fire and for EMS. Where Here, they might have it turned off in the I booth back there. Well, I, I don't even know that we could get where we are today, because uh, I mean everything's the price of everything is going up. I mean we have to have more money to buy medical supplies for ambulances on the road, so I'm not sure if we had the same identical budget we have this year that we're even going to get as far into next year as we are right now. Um, so does that answer your question? Yeah, so and what would, what would happen to your equipment a year down the road? What would happen to our equipment another year down the road? It would just be older and more wore out and probably sitting on the side of the road. Same question to you, Mr. Troxell. Yeah. Uh, oh, this, this one, I think we can. This one work? Uh, yeah. Okay. Wait a second. But yeah, I think it, we can it. all agree that everybody's got the same answer here. Yeah, That's everybody. not what the motion's about. The motion is for us to give staff directive and come back to us and say, these are the things that we really, really need. Now we got to find a way to pay for it. And that's what I see happening here. I don't see us, I see us today as giving staff a directive of going back and going, this is what we need to do. Now let's look at what the revenue is coming in at, okay? But I don't see us starting to slash things completely out of, out of here at this point. I don't see that unless I'm- I think that, that wasn't in my motion or directive. Yeah. Right. So while well, I get the floor, this is the, what, what I understood the motion to be, was to come back with a balanced budget, and we don't know what the you revenue is going to be, but... Was that um, one of your things, a balance, we're going to strive for a balanced budget without using reserves? Right. So you, right. in other words, you can't spend it if you ain't got it. Right. Okay. So knowing that we're not going to have $14 million in, in increase in revenue, I think um, it, it would be pretty, pretty, pretty foolish for us to think that we're going to see a 25 to 30 percent uptick tick in revenue um, year over year at least, not to say that it can't happen in the future. If we don't start getting 
a more proactive um, uh, mindset to the management of the county in the future. And this goes back to the conversation about the strategic planning and planning for budgeting for one, three, five, ten years. Um, we can't keep budgeting for one year. Mr. Grimes said himself, he's got to start replacing fire trucks. Um, Mike said the same thing but with uh, Public Works. Jay saying the same thing with his equipment. Now he, he, they're, they're trying to be proactive, but I, I think it's, it's setting our department heads up for failure if we give them this um, very loose um, um, set of marching orders that they you know, co come back and, you know, because we asked them for their needs. Nobody came in here and said, look, there, there's, this is some needs, but mostly wants, or a few wants and mostly needs. This is what they were saying is, is, is critical uh, for the maintenance of the county and management. Is that, is that correct? Is this stuff all critical or no? Everything they ask for, everything y'all ask for is critical, and if we don't have it, we're not going to operate next year. But I'm, I'm also, I'm That's also, what critical in, is. in talking with employees that are actually folks that are, that are operating equipment, operating day to day, in the ditches, the, the man that's getting paid $9 an hour to hold that flag, you know, um, they're the ones that, that are having to, to deal with this as well. We get to sit in here in this overly cold room that's, um, you know, if anything less than, to me, less than comfortable, but I'm, I'm not out having, having to glue things together and hold things together just to make ends meet. And I can only imagine what it would feel like as a, as a participant in a system like that then you start wondering, does the county even care about me as an employee? You know, they won't give me what I need to, to be able to perform my job. So I'm not saying that we need, you know, we need to come up with an additional $14 million. What I'm saying is, is if these are, are the needs of the, the uh, staff, then we as a commission need to make some sort of an attempt to fund as much of this as we can to move ourselves forward. We do have options. There are options that are available. Um, I've been screaming here for over two years. I've been trying to work in the words alternative funding into a sentence, and I just kept getting shut down. So um, eventually, if we don't have other funding methods and we don't see an increase in the number of people that are moving to Putnam County and participating in the tax base, we will absolutely crumble. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turner is. I believe Commissioner Adams Mr. Adams at, next, okay. but I'll whatever. Go Mr. Ahead, Adams Commissioner. at. So I guess my question is based on the motion alone, and maybe I'll say we're we going to have comments at the end or something. Yes. Just so I don't filibuster this with other things. Um, <clears throat> around the the motion itself, what is the state mandated for um, reserves percentage? I think we it's just hit that. Yeah, there's, yes. there, no, there, not, there's a mandate in statute. It's not a, it's a, a, a mandate, but the county has a 10% reserve policy. The state recommends just shy of 17% of reserves to of make sure you have an operating fund. budget that you can of cover for two months. Income. I'm sorry? Of our general fund. Uh, that's right, of it's your operating budget. It's our Avalorum income, correct? Um, yeah, it's not just Avalorum. General fund appropriations, that's correct. Right. So I think state statute is 10%, and then 17%. That recommendation comes from the Association of Counties, doesn't it, not from the state? I can tell you that the county has a 10% policy. And, and I, I guess I, I read several other people's budgets, other counties, over the last two years, and the ones that really go to the 17% are the ones that are on the ocean front, the ones that are more susceptible to, and their reasoning for it right in their statements is, we are more susceptible being an oceanfront community to hurricane damage, therefore we're going 17% instead of the 10% mandated by the state. I mean, that's actually the verbiage in them. And, and that could we be are in the five safest counties in the state of Florida from impact from hurricanes. We, we are, there's a corridor that goes from Palaka up to Lake City that is the safest locations in the county. Um, I would consider, I, I'd like us to consider not going to 17%. I, I don't think it's necessary. Now, unless if we have- We're at 10, hmm? We're at 10 now, that's what uh, our policy is. Yeah, policy. and what is, what is the actual reserve we have? I thought we were operating with 17. It's, it's, it's certainly more than the 10%. I don't know what the exact percentage is, but it's more. But the, the, the governmental allowance is, is what they want you to make sure you have at least two months of operating cash on hand of sure. whatever your general fund budget is. And right now we're around 60 something million. So I'm guessing somewhere around 13 million is, is what that uh, two that months would be. That also includes a lot of DOT money. No, we're no, just no this is just strictly. Just general fund. 
Yeah. So this is just this is just available funding that you have in your reserves for like no, what, no like, I'm saying the 63 million. So, okay. So I guess I, my ask is for clarification is, is your your motion is to go to the 10 percent minimum or is your motion to maintain 17 percent? The 10 percent county policy that we have okay. now. That's the minimum. That doesn't right. mean we have to. No, be no, I, I agree. That's the minimum it can right. be. Okay. Uh, Given again, if that's the criteria of the motion, then I'm fine with my questions. Uh, well, I'm glad you cleaned that up. So, um, Mr. Turner, you have. Uh, yes, uh, I just want to say two other things, and I'm done. We can't spend more money than what we got. We can discuss some kind of revenue, but raising fees is the same as raising taxes. It just it's the same thing. It's just risk, risk raising them. So. You know, I don't think I don't see how we can do another thing until uh, on this budget, really, until July, right. when we get real revenue figures. Because up until then, we're all just spitting in the wind, guys. Until we don't know how much we're going to get, how much we might could get back or not, or if we could fund part of this or all of it, we just don't know until such time as we find out what that what that number is. So. Um, well, that could be a little misleading because we we are going to get tentative numbers in June. That's right. And then we're going to be meeting with the constitutionals in June also. Well, and then they so can start probably, this process. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so, uh, and I would like to say that I'd like, uh, never mind, I'll say that later on the comments. Uh, and the last thing I said, we need, we've got to live within our means. Whatever those means are, we'll find out in June or July or whatever, but we've got to live within our means. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think everybody's commented. I called for a vote. Well, we got two more real quick, if you don't okay. mind. Okay. Mr. I apologize. I just had something I wanted to add. <clears throat> so, the advantage of basically shifting things to a fee from ad valorem and lowering ad valorem is it actually takes some of the risk of having <clears throat> your reserves and allows you, you have the option if you absolutely had to an emergency situation in the next fiscal year to actually have some headroom to be able to do something and have the reserves go back to the community. Um, that that's the the angle that I think of in my head so that that's the advantage of the fee beyond just spreading it out so it's not just about spreading it out to all, more people paying in it also is to build us more headroom in the event that a disaster did come right up the St. John's or, or down the St. John's whichever way it came the motion doesn't cover that sure it does because it covers reserves right it does that yeah <clears throat> so I, I believe that there is reasons why we would explore that and I also don't think that any of the, these great intelligent people that work with us and for us as a community don't in their heads know which of the items that they propose to us is the biggest priority. We just didn't ask them to outline it in that way and stack rank it, but they all kind of know in some way if, you know, you have four fire trucks, yeah, would I rather have three fire trucks? And somewhere in your, in your mind, you guys have that awareness. So um, I get it. We, this is a starting point. This isn't the That's end point. That's all it is. Thank you. And I guess that says it better. This is a starting point, not that point. Mr. Rawls, this is a starting point. We, we had a conversation not too long ago about doing a um, fire MSBU study. And this is one of the fees that we're talking about. Um, we don't charge anything for boat launch fees. Not everybody in Putnam County has a boat, but everybody has to pay for boat ramps if, if it comes out of general fund or out of parks and recreations um, budget. Um, Boat licensing fees, you know, we pay, we, we collect $2 and something cents for every license sold, but we could actually collect as much as the state collects if we wanted. I'm a boat owner, and I don't know any boater who would say, I'm not going to pay my fair share for to be able to maintain boat ramps, but it's to our advantage, and then we're the ones paying the fees for using the service, and there's other fees out there that, that can be put into place, but, um, you know, I, I, I personally think that we're anemic. I think that this train has been long coming down the tracks and it will eventually catch up to us. Um, we have a very frail economy right now that's, that's I don't know what's propping up, to be honest with you, um, nationally. And, you know, if, if there is any kind of stumble whatsoever and we go backwards like what happened in 2009 and 10, then where are we at? You know, then are we going to scramble and say, well, everybody just needs to pay more money because we can't afford anything? But at the end of the day, we are, we are tasked with the responsibility of life safety. That's part of our jobs as commissioners. Um, and I, I think that, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't go, go through this every single year, talking to departments, find out where they are, what their pains are, what their gains are, and what we can do to help them. Not, not taxing the citizens, but I've been living in this community for 33 years. 
and all I've done is paid taxes. So I, I feel like I'm overtaxed, if anything. I would like to pay less in taxes. I'm one of those folks. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to hear the motion restated. Um, I'm not sure if I'm in favor of this right now or not, but I'd like to hear it restated. I'll be, I'm prepared to vote. Ashley, can you restate? The, do you have it? But I do want to say while she's looking that up, it, now's our time to look at the additional revenues. Now it's time to go back to department heads. I think we can find a happy medium here. JR, I do believe that the board at the last meeting talked to you about the MSBU process and if it could be accomplished where dollar for dollar, that might not be able to happen in that, that capacity, but I think it needs to be talked about. So. I don't think all's gloom and doom. I think this was a great exercise today, you know, so we can find out what we have, what our needs are, and look at what the income is going to come in at in June, or tentative income, and then see what the constitutionals are coming back at. I don't think, I think this was a great exercise today. Ashley, you want to go ahead and repeat the motion? Okay, as I, as okay. I read. the motion is as give me the uh, five talking points again it was the cap the reserves um, our goal was to for this budget cycle cap reserves at what percentage and we determined that it was our policy was 10 percent lower millage rate reduce the solid waste fee and balance the budget without using reserves you got that now what is it? that's the motion that's the motion is that is how you 10 percent or two Mr. months Pick? 10 percent of the, what the county policy is now is 10 percent I'm, I'm, I'm confused that's two months of our general fund revenue right there. no sir it is no sir it is not 10 percent is your is the minimum that you have set in a policy that you do not want uh, the, uh, your reserve lines to fall below Correct. the two months r uh, reserves would be whatever uh, the cost of your general fund operating budget is and right now that's over 60 million dollars so uh we know. mr chairman we actually have more than 10 percent now we that's do. our minimum that we want we to allow to happen without yeah, this without this board right. explicitly knowing that we're dropping underneath our 10 percent that's right we got we got a lot more a lot more they, than 10 percent in reserves around here right mr now. chairman based on the based on the motion from what i heard is that you want to cap the reserves at 10 percent minimum. and you minimum, minimum and you want to balance your budget without the use of reserves so we're not going to worry about dropping below 10 percent because staff has just been directed not to use reserves to balance the budget that's correct so i'm i'm not worrying about either one of those yeah okay so uh but i don't think we'll have much of an issue what with I'm us hearing is almost an oxymoron so if you've got more than 10 percent and we're going to balance we're going to are we going to balance the budget um, not to go below 10 percent so this is this is up for grabs not what yeah. we said the the, the 10, point the 10 percent i'll explain the motion okay. if you want me to or you can i'm, I'm trying to get on board with you with you i'm well, trying to become a yes that. vote so i'm trying to get there too but to me it's real simple you can't go under 10 percent no matter what balance the budget within the money you have you'll know what that money is in june or july you'll know what what, what the new revenues are going to be I'd like to find some room in there somewhere for a, for a millage rate decrease, for a tax decrease. This commissioner would. I may be the only one sitting up here, but this commissioner wants to see a decrease in our taxes. So we have to do that. Well, and so that was, that was your options. Do you have any more questions, Terry? Yes, sir. I, okay. I have a few more. Okay. Well, please ask me. I'm making the motion. So. Okay. I mean, and, and we agree with that. I mean, whatever directive is from the Board of County Commissioners, that is what we're charged to do, and that's what we're going to do. We sat here today, and, and, and all day we've heard each one of our department directors talk about what their particular needs were, staffing levels, equipment, things like that. I need some direction from you five as to your priorities, as to which areas of the county that you think we need to, uh, to look at as far as funding or not funding at those levels because I'm, I'm going to be charged with putting a balanced budget together and come back and if it ain't what you five are looking for well we've just wasted a lot of time and I don't mean to say it like that but it's we went through a, a long day of exercise here and I need a little bit more direction as to your level of service your priorities your departmental con uh, needs and things of that nature so I can bring back with my staff a balanced budget to fit what it is that you're looking for this year I don't know what you're asking Terry I understand you're grandstanding on me and this ain't an easy job I understand that I get it but this is 
you're going to have to take something from everybody across the board because we don't have fourteen and a half million dollars. You know that. Yes, so sir, I do. I absolutely do. You're going to have to do what you would have done if this meeting hadn't have never been called today. You're absolutely right. Which is right. go meet with each department head and, and decide as administrator and staff, you're going to have to decide what gets funded and what doesn't. And it's not going to be easy because whatever you cut out, somebody up here is not going to like you for it. That's you kinda, know it and I know it. That's kind of the direction I was heading. I understand. And that's so, why I'm trying to answer this for you right up front. They're not going to like you. Or somebody up here is not going to like whatever you cut. Somebody's got to do it. Or somebody's got to find a revenue stream to replace it. Well, one of these. I, yes, sir. We're, we're going to bring you back a balanced budget. We will. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. We sat here all day and listened to all the needs and concerns. And uh, I... You know, for lack of a better term, I don't want to grandstand, but what I would like to do is be able to direct my staff in the direction in which that we need to be working. But we'll take care of that on our own, and, and we'll bring back a balanced budget. Thank you. Mr. Adams, that? Yeah, I, I think you ask a legitimate question. I just think your framing kind of wasn't the best. Um, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I think it was a little bit of grandstanding. So, so I'll tell you what my priorities yeah. is. No, I, I do. Um, it would be fire EMS police, then maintaining the level of service that we have today across the board and anything additional is outside the scope unless we can afford it i mean if that, that's what you're asking you asked that question i'm giving you that answer that is that is my answer to that better question answer, better answer than i could have given right mr rawls and then we're gonna i'm, I'm not no it is oh you're yeah done? no i'm not done so and i guess what i what i want to ask because I, I need to understand more about the reserve because now you're saying you're saying it's 10 percent of what we bring in so let's say we bring in a hundred thousand dollars no sir no, he said 10% of revenues. No, that's, no, he don't. Oh, 10% of operating budget? No, sir. We, we've we got to maintain a reserve of 10%. Right, the minimum. the minimum. I'm trying to establish the we bottom. We already got it. It right. ain't a what comes in or what is future revenues or anything else. As long as we maintain that, we've already got that yeah, money. Yeah, I got the bottom. Okay. That's right. So I, I understand well, the bottom. Not additional reserves so that let's say today in. we have 16%. Yeah. If the motion is worded in such a way that doesn't give them the flexibility to come down to 12% or 13% if so is needed, I don't support it. That, that's what I'm trying to get to. So, so the I way he know, worded it was I guess not I don't to affect. I what you're saying and the reason I'm saying why, I, I don't believe we need 16%. Because in reserves, we've got enough reserves to meet this if we don't use any next year's tax dollars, don't we? Don't we have enough reserves not right to now to meet the reserves? Well, to meet the reserves, yes. I mean, we, we need about, about 12 to 13 million. We're going to roll the reserves over to meet right. the reserves. 10% 10, 10 right. of, our, of our operating income would, or our expenses would be about $13 million, and we have that. $13 million and we got about $18 million, yes, sir. right? So there's about a $5 million. So right. I think Commissioner Adams... I just want to make sure we have the flex that you have the flexibility, that if it's deemed by us or you, that if you have to come down $2 million from that, 18 million to 16 million i want to make sure we're not wording it in a way that doesn't give you that freedom to do that that's what i'm trying to protect well, i think commissioner the motion as stated says that they try to present us a a budget that's balanced without using reserves right that doesn't mean they can't use this year's reserves to cover next year's reserves i mean that, that rolls forward yes correct? correct yes sir and just just a little i'm clarity. trying to give you more flexibility yes sir i under I hear what you're saying. What you, what you statutorily and fiduciary have to be careful about is with your, um, with I believe the flexibility you're trying to give us is that if we use some of those reserves this year, those are reoccurring costs. And not recurring costs. Well, if we use them on. in capital, they're non-recurring. Right. If we use them to balance the budget, then they're reoccurring. Right. Right. And so there is a very fine line that we have to be careful about how many years we're going to project to be using uh, reserves for reoccurring costs before we're going to be back at a break-even point and that's that's where administration just needs to know what your tolerance level is um, as far as what well, we our do tolerance <coughs> level is zero for reoccurring cost if you use reserves for reoccurring costs you're fixing to run into a wall Absolutely. you can't do that you've got you can use it for capital or whatever but you can't use reserves for <coughs> reoccurring costs you just can't do it Sure. Or so, a one-time return to the taxpayer. Well, that's capital type right. thing. Right. That's where I'm going, oh, yeah, is I'm to okay. achieve that other side. Right. We potentially 
get as much done as we can and we use part of the $18 million to get us down to 14.5 and we return 3.5, whatever the number ends up being, to the taxpayers. And if the taxpayers get that money back in lieu of paying the tax, they have more money in their pocket to spend, which in generates 7% back in sales tax and other means and gets us more tax base back into the county. And that's a repetitive thing because as they spend it in businesses, it's the whole reason why the, the stimulus package, if done properly, would have worked a lot better. And it rotational basically creates a such situation within 12 months that money is received back into the government. That, that's how the economics of it works. Mr. Rawls. All right. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm really confused, but let's see if we can get me, my head out of this. What is our total reserves as we stand today? $18 million. 18. Okay. And, and what is our total budget, not including anything DO, state DOT related? Total, your total. What is the basis of the 10% is? Yeah, what, what our 10% our, our is based Roughly on, is based on our operating um, general fund budget. It's about 60, between 60 and 65 million. Let's just say 13 million. It wasn't that high dollars. last year when we finished it. It wasn't that high that last year when we finished it. And that included DOT project money. I know, it, but last year's budget we finished up included DOT money is my point. So I, I, what, I, what I would like to see us get to, and I think I honestly think we, we, we owe ourselves um, another workshop just to discuss this and go through and, and have this conversation. But I think our, our mandated reserves is going to be a lot lower than, than, than we think. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the SAFER grant is going to expire one day. And who knows if it's going to be renewed or not in three years. So um, it wouldn't be rude to go up to those firefighters that were just hired and say, sorry, guys, you're out of luck. We're out of money. Um, that would be beyond rude. That, I, don't, I mean, if there, there's words that would describe it. I don't think anybody here would tolerate working under those conditions. And I guarantee you, if, you're, if your firefighters knew that they were working in those conditions, they may not stick around here. That might be a reason why we're spending so much revenue hiring and training and uh, hiring and training and this same thing with the Sheriff's Department. But I, I think that we, we need to focus on police, fire, rescue, trash collection, roads and bridges. Um, parks and recreation is something that our citizens want. I mean, does anybody that, that you talk to say they don't really care if we have a parks and recreation department? I mean, if, if we're talking about cutting low-hanging fruit, and that's, that's what the I staff know. is asking right now, I think we're doing them a disservice by saying, y'all just go back and do this. And then, but don't give them the roadmap. And that's what I thought we were going to accomplish today was have a, a vibrant conversation about laying out a roadmap that takes them down the path of getting to a strategic plan to where they can know what they're focusing on now, three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. And they don't have to do this fiasco every year because we, we, we know what, what – I mean, Jay is the luckiest department head in here, to be honest with you. <laughs> he has a path. He knows. He, he has a vision. Right. We, we have yet to give our staff a vision. What we gave them was a bunch of word on paper and we never got back around to finishing it. And that's what they're asking us for, is if, if we're gonna cram this down their throats, the, last, the least thing that we can do is give them the direction that this commission wants to head it. I know that we're not all gonna be um, unified in the decision, but it, you know, I, I don't think it can be just something as simple as balance the budget, don't increase, or in, increase reserves, don't increase the um, tax rate, and, and let, let's uh, decrease the landfill. That's just, you know what? I, I had a lot of fun on that when I ran in, in um, 2018, and, and, and I, you know, I, I, I couldn't imagine having more fun with that right now because it's really insulting to the public if we tell them that this is our ultimate goal. If we're just going to deliver you this so we can pat ourselves on the back and say we met these four objectives, um, it doesn't mean that we move the county forward um, or, or did any good for the taxpayers. This isn't about us. This is about the 75,000 people that live inside of our, our county limits. Call for a vote, Mr. Chairman. Call for the vote. We have a proper motion. We've got a proper second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. This was handed this year. Okay. Um, commissioner comments? <laughs> we, I'm joking. <laughs> I think this is a good start today. I know it's been very painful, but you know it might come back where we can't meet the objectives and we're going to have to look at other things but we'll see we're going to start a process and this was the first crawling of the process from this point on and uh, we'll move forward uh, mr adams at closing comments 
Yeah, I, I think this was a great exercise. I'll, I'll be honest with you. And, and I appreciate your frustration here at the end, but it wasn't meant to be that way. So I, I apologize if you're taking it that way. So <clears throat> I think maybe if we change the, if we decide to do this going forward in, in future years, if we change it maybe from the word budgeting, because that means something more than the word maybe forecasting. So maybe we do a quarterly forecasting meeting where we have these discussions, but there's no, there's no total commitment to it, right? So right now we're trying to make a total commitment with that, with that motion at the end, right? But if we just had this meeting so we're all aware of what all the different groups, they, they're aware of what each other is thinking, we're aware of what each other's thinking, maybe we just change the wording to forecasting from budgeting and that just takes us in a step where it's less intense. It's, it's more of a let's get things out on the table, let's start talking about it, let's compare notes. We found some areas where one group could help another group. That's all beneficial. So maybe we just change it to forecasting. I'm gonna reiterate, we need to keep looking for grants. There's gonna be more grants coming. We need to be creative with ways to find grants, whether it's federal or state. The state's gonna be given grants that come from the Fed to the state to us. The Fed's gonna have grants that come directly to us. The USDA is gonna have grants. There's gonna be all kinds of ridiculousness coming out. Um, I've had the pleasure of reading three or four different federal bills around the grants and the, the one point, well the, now it's 2.9 trillion or whatever, they, they were negotiating lowering it by 250 billion today to 2.75 trillion. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming. And the, the Association of Counties little meetings, I've sat in a few of those, there's things coming from that, those areas too where they're outlining how to go after that stuff. So budgeting versus forecasting, going after grants. Um, I think this is our probably the next six months is our last opportunity if we're going to try to renegotiate our, our rates for any loans that we have, anything like that. That's now is the time to do it. So we really need to, Matt left, but we really need to push Matt to see if he can move that forward. I know he was still working on it last time I talked to him. And uh, I had one other thing I wrote down, but I can't read it, so it must not have been that important. <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate this. I think this is exactly the way we need to, to do things more often. I know it's stressful to all you guys, and it's, it's not meant to be that way. We're all friends. We really respect what you guys are doing for us, and I just, at least I do as a commissioner. Um, so I, the frankness that came out, even whether we felt it was grandstanding or not, who cares, right? It's, you're, you're, we, we love you, all right? But, but you get it. And I, and I just want to make sure we're not doing this to see where there's three voters in consensus up here, because I don't think you can get that on many topics. I think you can get two here for one topic, two here for another. This isn't the board of old, I don't think, where we all are going to come in consensus. We, we're going to talk things out, and I think that's good. I think that's good for the citizens, and I think it's good for this board, and I think it's good for staff. So um, that's my, I guess it's like 35 cents. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, along those lines, I, I think it would really help with this if that's the true purpose of this is not to budget but to plan to restructure and replan and don't bring it, actually, actually bring in perhaps the numbers in a budget format next year or whatever we're going to do this again but actually make this a planning the meeting where we discuss how we get to different places with different individuals and how we could get jr to, to borrow his forklift or whatever those kind of things are but that takes it out that takes the whole context different than where it was today this wasn't a planning meeting this was a budget meeting that was a, with an undoable budget with an undoable upside down situation. And so we're still not there. So basically we spent the day and we did wonderful things as far as planning and learning and whatever. We're still no closer to a balanced budget than when we walked in here this morning, not one step further. So my point being is if we, I think this would be a good exercise to have for planning for discussion to get the department heads to talk. I know y'all do some of it now, but you don't probably get the chance with us talking with you too. We've got to do it in a workshop or not at all if it's all of us at one time. So yeah, I, I think that doing this type of a planning exercise in the future would be a good, a good step. I just don't know that it should be under a budget or first step for budget, but thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Turner, Mr. Roth. <coughs> How much money was spent last year on capital, on capital expenditures? Bring it. I can provide the it to you. The answer is very little. We, um, we, it was, we approved a capital plan. It did include spending some reserves from last year as well. 
it, but we, my point is, is, since before I got elected to today, we've not really put a lot of emphasis on capital expenditures. Um, we've been putting out fires. We've, um, it, you know, the, I don't think anybody in this room honestly could say that we've done a really good job of maintaining the assets that are owned by this, the public um, to the best of our abilities because I think we can do a lot better. Um, I think that and we, we get in a rush to be able to give ourselves accolades by saying that we held the line, we didn't raise um, the, the uh, um, tax base or tax rate, um, but we don't really think of the, the, uh, the folks that have to suffer for that, and that's the people that actually work here. Um, you know, animal services, uh, uh, regarding the animal services building, we had a meeting not too long ago where almost everybody in here except uh, JR and um, Angela were there, and you know, part of the conversation, and, and it, it got a little bit heated at one point, regard, uh, re revolved around how we do business. And then the answer came back to me, well, this is the direction the commission gives. So again, this falls on our watch. We're the ones that come up with our procurement policy, our personnel policy, our budget. This, this is up to us to do. And this is the, the whether we call this a planning a vi um, session, a visioning session, it's all budget. At the end of the day, it's all budget. That's, that's one of our jobs is, is getting the money in and getting it out. Um, but I think that we owe it to the citizens, and, but we also owe it to our staff to do this in a way that they're able to go out there and do their job and not wander around aimlessly wondering if they're doing what, they wa what we want if they don't know what we want. You know, so I think that um, we need to dust off the, um, the draft of the strategic plan I think we need to have a workshop as soon as possible to discuss that. I think our, and I said it when we had the strategic planning, right. our, we, all we have is, all we have is our final draft. We've never, we've never implemented our strategic, they're, yeah, they're using it. We, all we have, all I've, I've never seen the final version. All I saw was the final draft. That was the, the last thing I got it says final draft on it. it. It was actually on an agenda for a BOCC meeting, sir, but we'll pull it up. But it's, it, that was the final draft. It wasn't what we, I mean, is that really what we're going to go with as our final product? Yes, sir. That was after the meetings that were held I with said, the public, I said with it the then. commission. I, 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 think, I think that we, we could put a, a few pictures in on that. There's nothing there, and there's a lot of boilerplate language in it that came from the lady that produced it. I'll I be really more than happy. That, I really think that we need to just pull it out and have a meeting about it, though, at a workshop to go through it and then tie it to what? We want fire rescue to look like what we want planning and development service to look like what we want public works to look like because if if they don't know what that is then it's not fair for us to say give us a budget as well um, it you know it and I don't I don't know that we heard anything in here that's that's hair raising I mean I I didn't hear anything that I didn't expect to hear I I would hope that you guys walked in the same way I did this morning expecting to hear this but this is also gives us the opportunity to go out and sell this to the public that we serve because at the end of the day they have to agree to pay for this, these services maybe they say we don't have an appetite for another 10 million dollars we don't care what the fire rescue service looks like we don't care if it takes 10 months to get a permit we don't care if our roads never get graded i doubt we're going to hear that so thank you thank you mr rawls <clears throat> mr pickens yeah thank you chairman harvey um I, th I think this meeting was productive um I would have preferred to have a one-on-one -on -one with, with Ms. Julianne and, and um, Administrator Suggs first, and then I probably would have gone to each department head to discuss exactly each of the needs because you didn't put them down here unless you felt you needed them. And I think I'm going now from wants to needs to got to have, okay? I want to thank each one of y'all for the work that y'all have done putting this together. And I want to remind everybody that none of y'all were sitting here four years ago, okay? This is a whole new staff, and the administrator has, has done a good job putting together a team. A situation, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I truly hate to lose Jim and, and Angela. I really do. But I, um, I wish you well on your next endeavors. So we'll have to replace two people uh, that were key uh, to this operation, even just the short time that they were here. Um, this does open my eyes up that we have a lot of needs, but this budget, I don't see any way we can fund this whole thing. Now, can we start chipping away with it? Yes. And I think we have put the people in place that have made the suggestions, but I think we can whittle this down some 
and I will have a discussion with each one of y'all in the near future about this so um, so I can understand if you can't cut it you just can't cut it but we got to figure out how to fund this but I do think we need to um, probably not have another meeting until we know how much money we've got coming in right and then and then see where we go from there but I want to thank everybody for the work that they've done and all the different um, questions and discussions that we had here I think was was very good and we probably need to have this uh, next year but maybe after the one-on-one -on -one with with budget and maybe would maybe if you can have a better um, idea how much money is going to come in and I still think um, that we need to move forward to look at what that MSBU for the fire service is going to look like I, I think we need to do that at least you you understand um, that this is an option, but this is what it's going to cost the taxpayers. Um, a lot of people want services, but you know, how many people are going to want to pay for them? You know, another couple hundred dollars a year for fire service, and it's not going to bother me that bad. But when somebody calls you and asks if they can get off the weekly garbage service and they were paying 300 something dollars a year um, because they only have one little bag of garbage, we've got people in this county in that financial situation too. So we've got to be conscious of everybody in this county so uh, but anyway thank you staff thank you commissioner Harvey, for having this meeting um, that's all i got thank you mr pickens and i want to say i know it was a stressful day julianne i appreciate all the hard work mr suggs the same that's a lot of work all the department heads but i think it's not i don't think it was a wasted day i think now we can go back and we can find what we really need to do. We can find if we need additional funding sources, our eyes are open to what's gonna take place. And when we see the revenues that'll come in and we meet with the constitutionals, we'll get a better idea. But the other way around is we were given a number, we met with the constitutionals and we walked out going, we got no money left at all. And that was always depressing to me. And I wanted to kind of turn that around just a little bit so at least we knew that you know, we might not be able to do everything, but we can do some things. And um, if we can spend some extra money out of reserves to help buy capital, maybe that's a possibility. We have issues though. We do have a 310 bridge. I need to always keep saying that because we know we got some funding out there for it, but we don't have near the funding. So those things we can't just walk away from. And so we're gonna have to find ways to do that. But I do appreciate I know y'all sat in those hard chairs all day long and put up with us asking you questions. And sometimes it was heated and sometimes it was animated. Um, it's not fun, but we're all in this together as I think Commissioner Adams Act said that earlier and we're all in this together. And no one up here is malicious or wants to do anything different. We just wanna be a part of a good team going forward you inherited, again, somebody mentioned four years ago, we wouldn't have had this conversation four years ago because there was no money to have a conversation four years ago. And a lot of people took a lot of, you stepped in and you understood where we needed to go on our reserves. We were spending reserves. We were, we were spending reserves. We were raising millage rates. We were raising the tax, the fire tax unit. We were doing things to, to stay afloat. And now we can at least have a conversation of coming down. It might not be the best conversation, but it's a better conversation than what it was. Jim and Angela, I'm going to miss y'all very much. You know how I feel about y'all personally. And it's been a joy to work with you. Uh, truly is. And uh, our paths will cross again, I'm sure, one day. And, um, but I never want to see our team break apart. Never, ever. But I know that happens. I'm not naive to think that we can't stay together forever. It's going to happen. And it's going to probably other people will be looking at their path and what's happening in their future. We all do that occasionally. But I appreciate what y'all have done while you're here. Angela, you and I still need to sit down and go over some insurance stuff before I lose that knowledge right there because I don't want to lose that. Um, so those are the ends of my comments. I do want to as always, open it up for any public comments. If anybody in the public would like to speak, seeing uh, Mr. Suggs, would you like any closing comments? <laughs> Just stand up at the. <laughs> Can we go ahead and 
know it's been a long day when you wear out two microphones. We can. No, the only the only close of comment is I don't believe this was an exercise in futility. I think now everybody has a much better understanding as to where we are on this side of the fence on knowing the level of services that we need to provide. And I will agree with you, Commissioner Ross. I think it is time to look at some other issues, areas of, of, of need. So, uh, you know, I just think it's one of those things that this staff has, has worked really hard. Uh, you know, the, the directors that we've got in place are, are very good at what they do. And I do believe this is gonna be some trying times this year to try to get us to where we need to be you know, as far as a budget, but I think we can get there. I really do. We always do. It's just a matter of the level of service we want to provide. So, uh, but I do appreciate the opportunity to go through all this. And, and I'll say my goodbyes to Jim and Angela tomorrow during the uh, BOCC meeting, but, uh, but they all know what they mean to us and, and, and our team. So thank you. Thank you. And before I let you go, Mr. Commissioner Adam Jack has requested, he has a doctor's appointment and he will not be able to get back here till around three o'clock tomorrow and would like to request the workshop to be moved from two to three. So commissioners, what's your pleasure on that? I have no problem with that. <clears throat> did you look at the agenda and see that yeah. the first hour was something you wanted to attend? <laughs> I think I told Chairman Harvey I'd, I'd like to participate in all of it. Sure, I'd like to participate in all of it if possible. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, we can I don't disagree if he, can, can we then. can we make it 2:30 and that way he all he'll miss is the prayer and the pledge really yeah I, th I think 245 I will be physically so in the building is, is my goal as long as I don't get pulled over on the way from Gainesville <laughs> here I know I'm pretty good once I get to the no I'm not gonna say that um, <laughs> it's Alachua I'm, I'm concerned about the Alachua County side of the drive let's just Mr. Adams, that what we'll do is we'll start at 2.30, do the prayer, and we'll just do the, some house cleaning, and you'll be here at 2.45. Okay, is that good for everybody? Good. All right, Any, no, no further business. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you.